What's going on, man? I uh, just had to unmute my mic on OBS. Uh, I am, I'm all right, you know, just playing some D&D yeah. &D before work, trying some I new like stuff it. today. Go yeah, tell, tell us a little bit about this module, because I know you've spoken to the creator on your intro. Yeah, uh, so this module, uh, I know very, very little about it in the sense that I've, uh, this is the first time I'm actually reading through it, but um, I talked with uh, with James Intricasso, who's the creator of it. Uh, I know the maps were made by uh, Russ Hapke and Gabriel Picard, who is a friend of mine, a great map maker. Um, and it's, uh, it's, you know, it's traditional fantasy stuff. There's a lot of, a lot of newer D, newbie D&D &D elements in it, but we're going to see if we can't spice it up just a little bit and make it a little bit more crazy, because I know that's how you guys in chat like it. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, let's meet the, uh, the rest of our cast as well. What's up, Talos? Uh, Trainzy, how are you, my friend? Doing a fantastic. I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I um, uh, Trainty uh, took a bunch of pictures for me for my summer collection of, of Raw 20 t-shirts. And occasionally, whenever I press the start button, you know how on like Windows it shows you like a collage of your photos. It's mm. all just pictures of Trainzy, and I brought it up one day, and Sydney was like, "Why do you have so many?" Pictures? <laughs> <laughs> like, no reason. No reason. <laughs> Sydney, there's I something thought, I need to tell I have, you. I like these these skin tone pants. I thought about like. Wearing that T-shirt and just blurring out the skin tone pants and just like kind of standing there like it's completely normal. Yeah, of course yeah. that would be yeah. perfect. <laughs> oh man! And thank you to Th Jimmy for following. Welcome to the event, my friend. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Oh, uh, who are you playing today, Trainzy? Because we're playing new one-shot characters. I am playing a tiefling bard. Very interesting fellow that loves fame. Romance, whimsy, and song. Does he have a name? Sh Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl. I was going to be Derek. <laughs> Wrecked. Daryl, Derek, and <laughs> David. I wanted the power. We, we should all have Daryl, Derek, and something else. <laughs> Donahue. Okay, cool. Uh, Rem, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, this one is really quick. Hey, we need you to play a game. So I like things for the moment improv stuff. It's going to be good. Yes, indeed. So uh, who are you going to be playing today, Rob? Uh, the pre-made character I grabbed was a dwarven fighter who I named Burly Slapnut. He, uh, personality-wise, according to this little chart, he seems to be very mannerly and polite. <laughs> Burly but Slapnut. Yes, but if he doesn't, if he fights, if he's fighting a bad guy, he will kick its ass with like no no room to spare. And he has uh, this is very spe oddly specific sounding. It says my devastating finishing move was taught to me by Elaria Fawi. So I have a devastating finishing move I use. Probably has to do with my last name. Well, that's funny <laughs> because that's funny because my shield was given to me by my mentor, Elaria Feywing. Oh my goodness, Who's, <laughs> no. who is this woman? <laughs> I, I want yeah, we will we will get into that in just a little bit. Sure. Um, well, I am myself playing a Dragonborn Paladin today. We're all level one, right? Yeah. As far as I know, yeah. Yeah, we're all level one. Um, I am going to be called. Draco, the Dragonborn Drake Paladin. Draco, you got it. Draco is my name. All oh, right. wait, no. I, oh. If I do Draco, I have to do the uh, the voice of uh, Dennis Quaid from... Uh, uh, you're me, Trainzy. I was practicing my voice. Oh, okay. Um, I don't, yeah. like, go off screen and do it. Yeah, oh, okay, gosh. Um, <laughs> you need some time away. Yeah, I'm going to play Draco. And I'll do the voice of Dennis Quaid from uh, Dragon. What's it called? Dragon. Dragonheart. Dragonheart. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. I can do Sean Connery, but I can't do Sean Connery as well as Cord Can. So. That's a movie I remember nothing about, by the way. That is the greatest movie ever made. <laughs> Which one? Dragonheart. I know about a dragon and a knight, and the knight goes to kill the dragon, but they're best friends, and then. The dragon's heart has to be like cut out. He has to save the world, and then he becomes one of the stars. It's cool. I just remember the soundtrack's amazing. I just remember the CGI dragons. That's all. Have you seen Finding Forrester? <laughs> so, so I think that's our cast for today. Yes. All right. So 
it, you guys know that, or it was about six months ago that uh, Ilaria Feywing, uh, someone you all know, my camera is auto-focusing, uh, known throughout the kingdom of Skylark as just the master, uh, took all of you on as pupils. Um, uh, Ilaria is... Wait, I heard Kegels. She took us on as Kegels. Yes. Mm. She took you on as pupils to oh, do Kegels. Um, and pupils. so, uh, the, the old elf woman's skills in magic, combat, and survival are kind of legendary across the land. Uh, you knew, you know that she trained heroes like Marigold the Brave, uh, she was the one who slew the great blue dragon, uh, Daraxthes, uh, and... That was my friend. Yes, that, that was, that was the old dragon. And, uh, Bluton Buttertree, who, uh, closed the demon portal of Naragoth, uh, and many other famous heroes. Fucking nerd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, um, um uh, but of all, balls. of all the would-be treasure seekers, mercenaries, and do-gooders that came across her doorstep begging for wisdom... Uh, a lot. It was you who were selected by Alaria. Uh, so I'm gonna go around and ask you real quick. Uh, why? Uh, like, well, we'll start with um, we'll start with Draco. Uh, why was it that you came to the Master's Mansion before beginning your life of adventure? Because I believe that I'm the last of my kind, uh, and that I and that we must follow the old ways of adventuring, of knighthood. Okay. So you you believe that you are going to be the last dragon knight? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, and then we will go to Slapnut. Uh, yes. Why was it that you arrived at... Or why was it that you sought out the master at her Well, home? I imagine that he was just, you know, digging a little tunnel like all dwarves do, and he just kind of popped up in her house. I was like, oh, <laughs> this is convenient. So he, he, you, think he, he, you think he just, like, he didn't actually get selected? He just kind of fell through the cracks? No, no, nah, like, uh, like, like, maybe the person who was selected, he dug the hole out underneath him and they fell into it. And, and, and just she was just like, their place. Yeah. she was like, all right, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that person sucked. <laughs> all right, and then uh, last but not least, Daryl. Um, what was it that, you, that made you seek out uh, training with the master at her mansion? Um, you know, she actually saved my life during a training session, so uh, I'm I'm looking to to return the favor, if you know what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, did, what like did she your, save you from? Like oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> what did she What did she save you from? Um, it was uh, embarrassment because I'm trying to become famous. I saved couldn't. your life from embarrassment. <laughs> yeah. Did she clap uh, for you when no one else did? <laughs> I, uh, like, I tried to do an interpretive dance in front of in front of everybody with with daggers, and I, I happened to slip and stab myself in the heart, and she she removed it from from my heart and. Oh just, my god, that's just like Drake. That's that's more like that's more like <laughs> liter like saving your life from a knife wound rather than embarrassment. <laughs> I almost, I, I almost rather just the 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 dagger stuck there because I didn't land the dance. I didn't get the audition. Um, but she saved me, so I I'm thankful because now I can get famous. You know, maybe I'll hit the news. Okay, so maybe. she uh, she saved your life both figuratively and literally. Yeah, well, and then she praised me for the the um, you know, the abstract of. Like self mutilation meets dance, so she's like, "Wow, the the, the effort is great. The less dying next time, and you got it." Yeah, yeah. No, she clearly she knows her stuff when it comes to adventuring. Mm -hmm. She's got the advice. So um, over the last sort of the the last six months, uh, you guys have learned that Alar you you've been with her, you've been at her mansion training, and you've learned that Alaria Feywing is intense but also fair and encouraging. You know, she'll praise you when you need it, but she will be very strict. Uh, and, you know, clearly she knows how to whip even the uh, the surliest dwarf or the, the most uh, cringe-inducing bard into a real adventurer. Um, uh, though you know that the, the master is over eight centuries old, uh, you know, based on her elven lineage, she's kind of 
thin, very, uh, very kind of lithe, uh, and youthful, which, uh, sort of allows her to enforce your rigorous training regimen. Uh, each of you are learning about different skills, uh, some of you are learning about magic, some of you are learning about combat and survival and this and that, uh, but you all take your, uh, your meals together as a group, uh, you. On today in particular, you're sitting at a long dining table enjoying a hot breakfast together. Um, Ilaria is, is sort of at the head of the table just kind of quietly contemplating the events of the days to come when she puts down her porridge spoon and stands up, just sort of looking around the table and kind of meeting eyes with each of you. Uh, sort of, you know, her, her elbow. She gives us a look. Yeah. Okay. This, is, this is a little bit of a different look, though. Um, as you can see, kind of her, her elven hair is, is framing her intense green eyes. Uh, she, she gives us a smile before speaking. She says, It is time for your first real test in combat. Uh, we have a rat infestation in the basement. Uh, I managed to get them contained in the larder, but they'll soon eat through all of our supplies and... The door itself, if you don't go down there and exterminate them. Uh, she says, her kind of green eyes twinkling with mischievous delight as she adds, I also seem to have misplaced the key to the larder after locking them in. So you'll have to get through the door and pass the barricade I set up for you to get to the rats. Um, she says this as she kind of sits back down in her chair and puts another spoonful of porridge to her lips, just kind of slurping it, just... <sighs> before actually, uh, before she, or after she finishes, she kind of... This is a very like, fluid, like, yeah. liquid amount yeah, of... Yeah, uh, she, she likes her porridge watery. <laughs> yeah. uh, but when she, she takes that... Sweat. When she takes yeah. that long, drawn-out, kind of slurping sip from her spoon, she, um, she kind of Whoa. looks up at you, she says... Well, what are you all waiting for? Um, well, you know now is, now is kind of that's your cue. She she doesn't like small talk. Uh, well, Burley he you know is eating his porridge out of his helm, so he puffs it down, <laughs> sticks it on top of his head. He's like, all right, there it goes. This uh, I think now is a good time to go get some of these wee rats done. He yes. Uh, I'm gonna walk up to Laria. <laughs> Allow me to get this, madam. And I like dab the sides. Oh, yeah, she just kind of leans in <laughs> <laughs> with the napkin. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, you kind of gen gently wipe some some porridge off her cheek. Uh huh. And I turn around and kind of lick the. Right. I attend. I tend to the group. That's the last of my kind. I say we go down here. <laughs> <laughs> and follow the old ways. It's definitely, definitely Sean Connery. That's a good dog. The sword. <laughs> the pen is my tail and the sword. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so what do you, you guys, um, you guys want to just make your way down to the, uh, down to the, lar the basement? Mm. Yeah, that works. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Works me too. I'll, uh, uh, I guess I'll lead up. I'm decked out in armor. It's just follow the old door. Oh, in fact, because I forgot to say this earlier, um, we'll go down into the basement to kill some rats. It's it's the beginning of Morrowind, guys, uh, yeah. which I love. But um, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that follow button and join us. We're on 14, I believe, today. Out of 20 followers already. Uh, before we have a viewer decision, where you guys decide what happens next. So if you are new. Hit that button and join us. Also, here's a tweet for you guys. When it hits 20 retweets, you guys will decide what happens next in our game. Uh, you can, of course, donate to affect our game, give players nat 1s, nat 20s, wild magic surges, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and also, there's a Patreon. You can subscribe. There's a bunch of different ways to support the channel these days. It's pretty cool. Uh, and other than that, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them, and we will do our best to get them. I have a question. You said 14 out of 20? Well, yeah, I think so. Ooh, uh, and now it looks like 15. See. Oh my God. And uh, before we go down, can uh, Burley go to the pantry and grab like a big giant wheel of cheese? Yeah, sure. It's, it's, we'll say it's okay. on the way. <laughs> okay. Yes. What is it with you and wheels of cheeses? <laughs> is that it? Uh, yeah, hey, you can like 
get like five HP back for eating like ten of them in Skyrim. We're playing Skyrim, right? Right. Oh, right. <laughs> this is sense. yes. This clearly is an Elder Scrolls game. Um, and thank okay. you to Double GXG for following. Welcome to the adventure, my friend. You're a gentleman and a scholar. All right. right. So you as you guys like, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no. As you guys um, make your way down into the uh, the basement, um, the the basement steps of Alaria's mansion sort of lead to a stone passageway ending in a wooden door. Uh, you guys, and I will place you on the map if I can, if my mouse would work. Uh, you guys are right here. And you know that the, uh, beyond the door is a large, uh, larder. Full-size basement that is full of all manner of cheese, grains, and produce. Uh, okay. the rats inside can kind of live pretty well on all the food and stuff in there. Let's see. All right, lads. Uh, I uh, want to hang the cheese around my neck like Flavor Flav. Okay, uh, it's you. Uh, you have a bit. I'm gonna say because you're a dwarf, you have a bit of chain just lying around. There you go. That's my cheese chain. I always keep it just in case. Um, <laughs> All right, so these weird ass they'll, uh, they'll be flocking to me. So they be off of you. I'm like a magnet. A rat magnet. I'm just gonna go in there and get them all to jump on me, and I'll slap. It's it seems to me strange that uh, she has just so happened to have misplaced the keys to the cellar. It seems more like a test to me than anything. That is true. And how do you say that? Uh, well, there's only a way to beat this test, and that's to take it. And I go up to the front door. And follow the old code. Yes, and uh, follow the old dwarf. All right, so slap not you, you make your way up to the door. Uh, what do you want to do? Um, is it locked? I check to make sure it's locked. It is locked. Just, uh, well, damn, we can't get in. Test done. No. Uh, I just take my axe. He's good. And I, uh, proceed to unlock it the way dwarves unlock things. So, you wanna, you wanna smash it down? <laughs> I do. Uh, sure. Uh, go ahead and roll me, uh, do you, you don't, do you have a weapon? Yeah, he's got a battle axe. All right. Do you yeah. want to want to use your battle axe, or do you just want to use your uh, well. shoulder? Well, yeah. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. So you uh, you kind of bury the battle axe in the door. Um, you know, she might want that door later. The, the hey, she can get a new door. She's rich. <laughs> the axe as just the axe just sort of sinks into the wood, and you hear kind of a cracking sound as part of the the top of the door your axe hit like the wooden frame has buckled. Uh, the door has not moved; like it's still in its uh, in its place, but you've damaged it pretty severely. Okay, I'm just. Yeah. I'll just... Any you want to give a try? Oh, I pull the axe out. I push push him aside like. I once heard a tale of Pied Piper. Allow me, my friend, and grab a flute out of my <laughs> pack. And I'm gonna, like, put it through the doorway and just go. If the tale is correct, they should be gone, and the building shall stand erect. I, I, okay. <laughs> I'll pick up next to the trickling. How did he pass the test again? So, uh, so you play your music and then you just step away from the door? Oh yeah, it's done. Like the, the rats are gone. Okay. <laughs> I guess what the Pied Piper did, right? He led right. them to the water outside the town. But so, I'm like funneling him into a corner of the basement. So the door is the, the, the rats as far as you know are gone on the other side, but the door is still standing. Hmm. Hey Draco, maybe you should go check to see if those rats are gone. I'm not quite sure what you said. Go check to see if rats are gone. I think he might be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to Clarity GGTV for following. Welcome to the adventure, my friend. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Thanks for the host, buddy. So I say, uh, I what do you want of me? I said I want you to go to that door and see if those rats are gone. Right. Okay, I will. I 
I'm going to step towards the door now and following the old code as I do so. So I, what, I go. What to... is the old code? Fuck you, Askren. You don't know what the old code is? Good lord. Good lord! Mm. Treachery! <laughs> Heresy! You'll, you'll, by the end of this session, Askren, you'll know what the old code is. <laughs> Alright, so you walk, you walk the five feet following the old code every step? Uh, every step away, each step <laughs> of the code. <laughs> Alright, and what do you do when you get up to the door? I look through. Uh, so you want to look. see any rats. Yeah, uh, roll me a perception check. Fuck. Um, my roll 20 is being super slow. Here we go. Uh, perception check. Let's see here. Perception is 20. Fuck yeah. Hey, Red Phoenix. Uh, you kind of. Do you have dark vision? Uh, did Dragon Ball have dark vision? I think so. I think so. I think if it's not a human, it's got dark vision. It should say in your sheet, I believe. Let me see. Uh, what would it be? Let's check. Character sheet. Dragon Born. Um, racial features. Breath weapon. No. No, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Oh. So uh, you you see beyond you kind of a little bit of light coming from from a little the crack, but mostly dark. I can mostly only see dark crack in here. <laughs> I can so, see. I'm gonna just, while, he's, while his head's like shoved through there, I want to widen the crack with my battle axe a little more. <laughs> <laughs> like, how, do you, how do you want to do that? Hmm? You want to bring the axe down while his head is Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, no. he's like, ah, I'll help you see. You know. What we need is some illumination. And... Yeah. I'm gonna strike a torch. Okay. Oh, okay. that works. So you uh you kind of pull a torch out from your waist and you uh just use your breath to light it on fire, and you kind of use it to peer through into the dark beyond. Uh, inside, uh, you can kind of you see you can just make out the light flickering over the edges of of crates and stuff that are piled up here. Um. You can't. You don't see a lot of movement. It's and the, the torch doesn't illuminate a ton of space inside because it's only a tiny, tiny crack that the the light is going through. But you can. I mean, it. You see some of the crates look like they've been tumbled over. Um, the it, you can see some stuff spread out on the floor. It looks like uh, some of them may have been opened. You can catch a glint of a glass bottle just kind of lying on the floor. Hmm. No rats. You might have cleared them out. Well, that seems almost too easy. This could be a challenge. Only the penitent man may pass. The penitent man. So, so we're going here to what? Can you reach the lock on the other side? I'm trying, I like, believe like I can. Jewish guy now or something. <laughs> Right, so you, uh, Draco, you kind of force your arm through. It, it, it takes a little bit of widening this hole, but you eventually manage to sort of shove, uh, you know, shove your arm through and kind of reach the bolt on the other side, and you can unbolt it. Okay, I open it up. Okay, as it soon as fast. you do, however, uh, stop. Not you're gonna, you're closer to the door. Um, you, as soon as you do, you hear a loud. Sorry about that. I, I let myself go. As the, uh, uh, da, 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 give me one second. Uh, it had to be snakes. <laughs> so, um. I just keep him going. The look of pure hatred from trains. We were scared of snakes. Jackson Connor. <laughs> <laughs> in slash indie. <laughs> He's just taking oh, these lines. I was, th I was thinking of like, uh, John Voight from Anaconda. Let's get the snakes. So as the uh, as, as you guys are you guys are kind of kind of listening to this sound, you hear the like from the lock in the door, a oh. stream of green gas fills the uh, the hallway that you guys are in. I fight back with my own gas. Well, uh, you can fight back by rolling me a Constitution save. Damn, Uncle, oh, cool. I'm good at that. Get fat. Gassy rats in here. If it's a poison, then I get advantage against this save. Wait, okay. Oh, Trainsy. 
Trainsy <laughs> rolling the double nat ones. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> uh, so Slapnut, you kind of as this uh, as this kind of poison fills the uh, gas fills the hallway. You just sort of take a deep breath. Ah, to... <sighs> my own brand. <laughs> yes, right. What's what's wrong with the rest of you? Uh, 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 Draco, you are also kind of you get you kind of inhale this gas and you start choking on it, but uh, you do like you don't seem to succumb to it. However, as the as the gas is filling the chamber, you hear kind of a thump as uh, Daryl is like on the floor gasping and wheezing. Uh, Amongst this gas, horribly, horribly being brought down by it. Oh. And thank you to Mikkel for following up and avenge my friends, your gentleman and a scholar. He, he'll never play his flute breathing like that. Uh, your technique is all wrong. I try to inhale as much of the gas as I can to get rid of it. <laughs> all right, as you're, you're just kind of trying to bellow this gas out. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, uh, you are going to be you're going to be poisoned for one hour. <laughs> oh no! Uh... Are you okay, there, Daryl? <laughs> We're going to have to give him CPR. I I get down. I get yeah, down. Kind of <laughs> you like do like your birth weapon into it. <laughs> <One>, two, that. <laughs> And then, and then I, yeah, and I give him some mouth to mouth, yeah. I go in, look. I think he's better now. I want to examine this trap. I'm going to give it a look see. So, uh, very quickly, the, the cloud, like, the it finishes spraying out, and the cloud itself sort of dissipates into the air and up, up back through the hallway that you came. And eventually, when it clears out, um, you kind of, you saw it that the gas had poured out from the lock itself. Hmm. See, I tried to just break the door so that wouldn't happen, but you won't listen to me. I uh, just kind of like ball past the down trainsy and want to just go into this room. I got my dark vision. I want to scan right. it. So you uh, you shove the door open. Uh, let me Get out of the way. Let me. Uh... Wee... Nope. Yeah. We doom. As the door opens, uh, I believe this is not dynamic lighting. This is, is this? Yeah. Okay, it is. Let me uh, let me give you guys some light. So you have a torch, Draco, right? I do. Yes. Uh, right. Fifteen. And all players see the light, and then. Why are you I... not? Oh, because I may not have enabled it. Give me one second. Okay. I can't see. I can't see. You see nothing down here in this damn diamond rat's place. And... Oh yeah, for those of you who don't know, it's minus it's one year together today, which means I will not be doing the 4 p.m. show because she would kill me if I did. I managed to get away with this one. <laughs> I'm confused as to right. what is going on with the light settings here. Um, I don't know. Do you know what poison is affecting me? Like what? What? What effect? Yeah. Um, give me one second. Let's try polygon. I'm just continuing to give you CPR at this point. And I'm still inhaling all the gas. Ah, there's some light. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, that's weird. Ah, let's turn geez. off fog of war. Looks there, like a no. Wrong. You know what? Let's turn it back on. I see shit. Oh, I'll look at the things. Okay. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. No, I was just, I was very confused as to what was going on with the lighting, so. Let me, uh, let me just fix that. So, um, okay. So, as you guys make your way in, uh, let's do this. This is what you can see-ish right now. At some point, CPR turns into making out. Um. <laughs> is just all CPR or... <laughs> At some point, guys, all CPR turns into Jamaican. That's right. I've I mean, seen uh, the Sandlot. That's why I tried to be. So, uh, so for the record, uh, Dale or uh, Trainsy, <laughs> you are. I, I called you Daylot for a second. A poisoned creature has disadvantage on all attack rolls and ability checks. Ooh. For an hour. 
Uh, so Slapnut, as you take your steps into this, uh, into this room, the heavy smell of giant rat dung hits you square in the face as the door swings open. Uh, you can like see home. a scamper of feet can be heard as rodents the size of golden retrievers kind of run back and forth at opposite ends of the room amid gnawed open crates, ah. barrels, and bags of food. Uh, between the rats uh, and you is a is what appears to be a line of boxes that has been set up by Alania to keep the rodents on the far side of the room, and that is this sort of wall right here. Okay. It's like, I can't get to these rats with this boxes in the way, and I go over to the uh, barrier right there, and now yeah. I see what the two little rats or two giant rats big box little box i'm gonna set my wheel of cheese right there to lure them towards me all right so you want <laughs> to you, like, you want to you want to kind of throw the cheese over the wall or you want to push through the like or step over the wall I'm gonna, like hop up hop up on one of these boxes mm -hmm. and drop the cheese in the square next to me and like get an axe up to just like sure let me uh, that, let's go that rat let's let's draw a cheese hold on I want to. Oh, yes. Draw the cheese. Draw the cheese. I'm pretty sure you can it's, Google uh, like, it. Uh, it's control, right? So you can no. freehand it. Let's see. I can draw the cheese. You can we draw the cheese? Let there. me draw my cheese. You've got, a, you've got a wheel of cheese. <laughs> yeah, look at that wheel of cheese. That's, it's That's not that big. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it is. But it, uh, so you, you drop this wheel of cheese here, and there is a quick scurrying uh, of as one of these giant rats bounce from the darkness towards it and start and kind of grips the cheese in its teeth and starts dragging it backwards i want to like grab the rat by the oh, tail geez. all right you want to you want to attempt to grab the rat before it uh before it runs yeah, away like snatch it by the tail and because i don't right. like just roll me oh man roll me a dexterity check damn it okay let's see that is if i had a dollar for every time <laughs> i heard that dexterity yeah i'm okay with dexterity just a regular old Dexter 10! Yeah. Alright, give me one second, because... Oh, man. Is there a rat thing? There should be, right? Yeah, it should, it's, it's like the... It's like the... Token first level like bad guy. No, no, so, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about in Sirenscape. Giant rat battle! There is one! Oh, <laughs> sweet! Alright. You're such a nerd, bro. Dude, I love Sirenscape. <laughs> Giant rat battle! <laughs> Giant rat battle! <laughs> A rap battle. I am too. <laughs> I love it as well. All right, we don't need the the wind. Uh, we definitely need. I need the wind. Wind on my side. Wind on my scales. All right, cool. So you you're going to uh you're gonna. You attempt to grab the rat by the tail, but unfortunately, this thing is just kind of too the tail is too small of a target and it's yeah. ripping by uh and you uh you like the rat just kind of ah, goes out of the way and starts dragging this cheese wheel away and as it starts pulling the cheese wheel into the darkness or back oh. towards the darkness you see other rats are kind of scampering out as they have kind of they have they're scampering towards the light as they clearly see a way out of this room like but cheese i uh I look at, I turn back to the party. Break it up! We have to get the cheese! And, and the bats! I, uh... The rats, I would say. I draw the axe. Alright, so as you get ready to fight the rats and slaughter them off to get your cheese back, we're gonna roll some initiative. That's right. <sighs> let me, uh, let me find my giant rats here. Where's my cheese? Let's see. Roll 20, why you be so slow? My initiative is minus one, I'm the best. <laughs> That's a nine. Alright, so you get a turn, you get a turn, you get a turn, and you get a turn. Um, you get a turn, and you get a turn! Alright, so what everyone get? The giant rats got eight. They got a nine. Fifteen. Draco got a nine. Slapna got a 15, and Daryl got a 12. All right. So as we uh, we sort these descending order, Slapna, you are on top of the crates. You are going first. 
What do you okay. want to do? Okay. He's gonna like hold his battle axe in his hand and just you know. I'm the blessing of Valeria. You have sent snatch the teas and he he does like that Matthew McConaughey jump from Reign of Fire where he's going after the dragon like ah and just wants to bring the axe down on the rat. That's lopping away with his cheeks. Nice. It looks really cool. So battle axe roll. Really nice. 17 for five Perfect. slashing damage. All right, cool. Uh, so as you you're you're doing the one with the cheese, as you bring the axe down upon it, you hit this thing pretty squarely with a uh, a like a, a chop, and for five damage, the rat is going to sort of tumble to the side, like roll to the side, dropping the cheese as it goes, and ri like bleeding out of a, a wound on its side. These are big rats, by the way. So yeah. it's like well, it's this not... is a dwarven mouse trap. We just yeah. put a cheese near a dwarf. You kill your rat. <laughs> Enlightening. Return, I guess. Good to know. Should I ever need pest control? <laughs> All right. Uh, so as you are diving into the fray and kind of sl swinging axe into these rats, Daryl, you are at the back, and you have se you saw Slapnut just kind of rush in over this barricade and start cleaving into rats. What do you want to do? Um, I'm still kind of sold on the idea that my flute is going to have some, some power or method. So I'm going to like get, get next to two of them that might be staring at me as if they want to attack. Just... <laughs> be gone, fair rats! Uh, so are you, like are, it. Are you are you given inspiration? <laughs> Maybe it huh? motivates me. All right. So you uh you you kind of play your flute and slap nut. You hear this this kind of kind of strange tune that is oddly jaunty. That's right. He knows he knows what jaunts the slap nut. <laughs> uh, you can uh you Does can Darryl take you hear that from the, from the DM's condescending nature of his flute. No, no, that wasn't kind of, that is a, it's a jaunty tune. We, we, you're not going for jaunty? <laughs> it's a dark and brooding, Brian, Jesus. You oh. <laughs> tell? <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I was, I was, I was reading something, I was reading something in chat, and then I heard the flute, and I'm like, that's a, that's a jaunty-ass flute. Damn. Mm. All right, well. That's just fine. <laughs> just fine at Trancy. <laughs> if Daryl heard that. <sighs> Alright, so Slap Nut, you can take your 1d6 inspiration. Daryl, do you want to do anything else with your turn? Uh, do the rats seem like, are they affected at all? Or? You don't really have a good line of sight to them because you're back in the hallway and there, there's a barricade between you two. Um, oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, I wanted to move first. Can I Should hop have done over it. the barricade at all? What's up? Can I hop over the barricade at all? Uh, yeah, it's not that tall. It's just enough to keep. So yeah, I just I wanted to like I wanted to go over there and face face one of the rats and just kind of play at it. As oh, if okay. It's, so were you were you not trying were you not trying to inspire slap? Not I wasn't I wasn't trying to inspire. Oh, I was like. We I'm convinced that the Pied Piper exists. He's like a celebrity, okay. and uh, his his flute playing method, you know, banished the rats miraculously forever he went. So I just, just went there and jammed out like it was a concert for the rats. That's not really what happened in the Pied Piper story. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, oh, I died. I drove them from the town into the <laughs> river. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no, so you're man. you're playing you're playing a tune for this rat that is just has a has a giant bleeding wound in its side. Uh, were you ca did you want to cast a spell with it or anything, or did you just want to just want to rock out? No, we're rocking out. We're hoping that you know, I, I can't quite remember the story, but we're hoping that the rats, that that rat will go tell its rat friends that it had a sweet concert and then they'll leave. <laughs> 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 I, I, I can, I can see it. <laughs> Let me edit this real quick. 
James and Tricasso, did you prepare for this in your module? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the stress test. You need me to roll? I ain't what up? Uh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll just we'll roll with it. We'll see how the how the rats do. Um, Got this. All right. So you uh you are rocking out, uh Draco. You you see them rushing past you into the fray. What do you want to do? I want to rush in there myself and see what's going on in here. I'm going to go like so. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry, there. Can't seem to fucking move. <laughs> there we go. Ah, getting closer. Ah, uh -huh, giant rat. And I want to hit this rat uh, with my longsword. Of the old code. For 24 for 8 slashing damage. Mm. That will absolutely hit you. Uh, why don't you tell us how you bring this rat to pieces? I bring my sword of the old code down with the justice of knowing that he's had a worthy death and that I've saved the good folk of Camelot. And I cut off his head. Then I teabag it. No, I'm kidding. I, <laughs> I just want to die. And then I kind of look sadly. Goodbye, brother. Okay. Um, so you uh, you slaughter this rat, and then you kind of give it a salute uh, <laughs> as it, it dies honorably. Uh, as it does, this other rat is kind of coming out of the darkness, is going to attempt to chomp at Slapnut. Take a big ol' big ol' rat mm. bite. Big ol' bottle of ass. Shit, 23? Yeah, let me check. Yeah, I think that might hit a little bit. Alright, you Good. feel the, the four piercing damage as this rat sinks its teeth into your leg and just kind of will not let go. I have become one with the Jays. The rats are after me now. So that rat's charging us despite my song. Uh, it was already kind of, it was, it was there already, so, yes. You've started a mosh pit. <laughs> <laughs> kind of get elated by, by that comment. Yeah. Like, I'm playing well enough that they're really kind of entertained or... Entertained. <laughs> I am not entertained. All right. Uh, so, and as that's going on, you can see one more rat is kind of bolting out of the darkness uh, because there is still cheese at your feet, and this rat wants it because someone has to claim the cheese, and these these rats want it to be them. Uh, so, as that's going on, slap. Oh, yeah. How do you want to react? This uh, rat that decided to uh, bite me, um, I'm going to bite it back with my axe and just uh, give him a little tickle. I'm going to just give him a little bit of a tickle right there. Let's see what's up. Swing! Ah! Oh, damn, eight. As you swing at it, you're kind of turning around and the rat is still attached to your leg, so it just ah. goes with you and you end up striking the floor where there is no rat. Yeah, so I, um, I'm like waving my foot with the rat on it. You know, Fruit boy, get this head off my fat man! I like just <laughs> target of like incomprehensible muttering from the old ass door. All right, uh, Daryl, what do you want to do? Terrifying. When they cast sleep on the rat that's attached to his leg. All right, cool. Uh, sleep has a DC, correct? Yeah. Or is it, uh, what's the save? Hit points. Based? Yeah, it's like send so many hit points. Off oh yeah. The then, uh, then, do you want to do it on that? Or do you want to affect multiple targets? Because you can affect as much up to like, a bunch. <laughs> affect me. <laughs> uh, I, I guess all the, the the rats in proximity, maybe, maybe even more. Okay, okay, so you just you just kind of uh. It's ninety feet. So. so I'm assuming all of your magical spells come through your flute, much like anything else does. <laughs> So, uh, so you just let... <laughs> really is quite grating after a while. <laughs> so you, uh... Great in the heart and you'll be great in my cheese! <laughs> as, you, as, you, as you blow on your flute, there's sort of a pulse of magical energy spreading through the room. And, um... It's, uh... 
it kind of sends outwards and all the rats that you can see just kind of like this one's charging at you, this one's attached to slant nut, they just kind of fall over, kind of snoring loudly. Oh, they're all done. Good job. Yes, like yes. In that case, I suppose we need to return to Laria and tell her that her problem is solved. Well, we need to return them to a new home. I, no. uh... No, we don't. They're only asleep. Well, I shall... I can fix that problem. So I can you, help you fix that problem. So what do you want to do with the rats? I mean, they're, kidding. Are, they're still asleep, so what do you want to do? They do not follow the old code. After all, we must protect the people of Camelot. Uh, while he's mumbling, I'm just gonna take take uh, the axe and go chop crazy on the one that was batting my leg. Actually, no, I'm gonna bite it back. <laughs> and thank you to I am the cheesiest for following. Welcome to the adventure, <laughs> your gentleman and the scholar. Get wrecked. Uh, is that 18 or is that? Easier than you. Damn. Oh, yeah, 18, I think. Yeah, I need two okay. followers away, folks. So All right, well, if Hold you guys up. are hanging out in chat and you haven't followed, just two followers away, and we have a viewer decision, which, who knows, maybe there is more lurking in the darkness of this cellar. Or maybe there's a prize for killing all the rats or something else. Or maybe we're actually in Camelot. Yeah, that could sure. be the case. We don't know. You should help us figure that out with a viewer decision. Um, so, Slapnut, you want to just bring your axe down and slaughter the, yeah, the rats? I'm gonna, I'm gonna bite it back. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bite it. Go leg. Ozzy Osbourne on it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, it bit me. And I don't like that. So, yeah. Why I'm, Sydney? I'm gonna, oh, Sydney's back bad. from class. <laughs> She said she won a game of Hearthstone in a science class. And thanks to Mad Cow Chef for following. Welcome to that's, the uh, that's, that's Gabriel Picard. Nice. He's the guy who gentleman. made the map that you're playing on. A gentleman and a scholar. Yes, what a nice gentleman. Thanks, man. We're enjoying it. We like it. Don't tell him about what we did to the rats, guys. Don't know. I, I do I do want to say, though, uh, if you haven't hit him up, uh, Gabriel makes the best map packs on Roll20, so you should buy all of them. Because they all look like this. Um, so yeah, so you slap nut, you go Ozzy Osbourne, you pick up this rat and just ah, chomp his head off. Draco, did you want to honorably execute the last one? I, you know, I want to leave one of them for a pet for Trainsy actually, so. What's up? Oh, well there's there's only two rats left. One of them, Draco, uh, slap nut eating. Yeah, then I'll, I'll leave this one alive. Okay. Kind of a cradle, cradles rat. Just kind of. Kind of pet its beady little face, poop it on the nose a little bit. I shall call you Turkey Dumpling. Why will you call him that? He's not a turkey or a dumpling. Well, why do you question me? Because he's neither a turkey nor a dumpling. Huh. Well, that is <laughs> your opinion, my friend. No, it is actually a fact. He is neither a turkey nor a dumpling. He is a rat. What would you suggest the name? Rat. Or ratty, or ratatouille. How basic. Turkey dumpling it is. Very well. Although I shall be calling him ratatouille. This, this, this whole time they're having a little debate, uh, Slapnut's gonna just be like inching his hand over and grab the cheese wheel and slowly pocketing it back. I'm gonna hang it back on his cheese chain. Yeah. It's, it's, you put it back like a medallion and you're like, yeah. Don't touch my chain. Slapnut, slap! Just like Flavor Flav does. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, maybe we should uh, go around and check out more of this uh, downstairs business. Slicing <laughs> Billy Connolly. <laughs> You can understand me, but I'm so drunk and Scottish. Uh, I say, um, uh, yes, very well. Let us um, explore further and then return to Alaria. All right, give me one second. You may have a total of two. 
Your time is up. All right. So as you, uh, as, uh, as Daryl is kind of, kind of clutching the sleeping rat in his hand, the rest of you guys have a chance to explore the rest of the basement, and you find that it is uh, a little bit trashed as rats have knocked over a lot of things, eaten through a lot of crates and stuff, but uh, otherwise there doesn't seem to be much more of an infestation. They may have fled or they may have sought shelter elsewhere. But uh, as the last rat is dealt with, you guys can hear the, the sound of applause coming from the doorway behind you. Um, you, uh, your the master is standing there, kind of beaming at you. She says, "Excellent work! You are the most impressive group of students I've had in more than a century. You learned quickly that you're stronger as a bad team students. than yes. you are as individuals. Yes." I've I've been having some very bad luck with students the last hundred years. <laughs> it's been a bad century for us, really. <laughs> <laughs> I get the students these days, what the, uh, the finance is going on. Um, the, uh, the, the, the elf kind of looks around and laughs. She says, I always forget how expensive this test is. No matter, let me clean up. I think you've earned the, re the rest of the day off. Hey, all right then. That sounds good to me. When uh, what, what about these rats? Like her polymorphed previous students, we failed. <laughs> so you guys are uh, you guys are given the uh, the rest of the day off, and you have a chance to to kind of rest and relax. Um, where and uh, as as you guys all kind of make you know make your way up back into the dining room, we're gonna we're gonna fade out a little bit because. Uh, the the introduction of this this movie is now like the the exposition is now over, uh, and we we cut to that you know that black screen where it says five years later or or something like that. Um, I survived five years. Wow. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Before that happens, could I uh, use heroism on my rat? Uh, well, we'll get we'll get to that in one second. The next five years. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> like a every line. day, I tell him <laughs> heroic. You're the best. <laughs> best. Okay, dumpling. Don't let anyone let you. It's evolved into eradicate rat than you actually are. All right. So you guys are um, the. It's been a while since you uh, since your time at the mansion, and you guys have since moved. Uh, at Alaria's instructions to uh, the frontier town of Parabor. Um, it's it's mostly a mining town. They've they've got a kind of a silver fueled economy and stuff like that. Um, and it's pretty much cut off in this valley from uh, from the rest of the kingdom of Camelot. Um, but uh, the yeah this this small dom this small town is mostly ignored by King Arthur as it kind of. He, he, he mostly just ignores it due to its positioning. Um, and let me... So, uh, thank you to Emerald Man 74 for following. Welcome to the adventure, my friend. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Uh, let us know when you want to do the, uh, the straw poll, my friend. Uh, you, you can run it in chat right now. So, um, here, so I will... Let me, uh, let me just finish this uh, a little bit of exposition and then we'll, we'll dive right into that. So, uh, so you guys have been hanging out in this town... Um, the uh, the a lot of the da the jobs of protecting this place from the wilds and stuff attract more uh, more than kind of miners and adventurers to this small town. Plenty of people uh, running from either the law, their past, or other kinds of uh, other kinds of things come to Parabor for almost like a refuge from their previous life. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, yeah, this is, this is not really a village where people ask where you came from all that much. What you guys know, uh, as you've been living here for a little while, is that three days ago, your uh, renowned mentor, Elaria Feywing, has died. Um, and Fucking she, rip. Yeah, she was, she was well known uh, in this valley and the others. In fact, you were her final pupils. Uh, the ancient elf who taught you the secrets of combat, magic, and wilderness survival passed away peacefully in her sleep, um, and... Uh, that same night, she had sent a message to all of you saying that your training was complete. 
um, you, uh, you, you were kind of, kind of in this town when you received the news, and, you know, you, you were all in the process of looking for work, um, you're, you're pretty, and honestly, yeah. she, she looked pretty, she looked pretty well the last time you saw her, she looked like she probably could have lived another 800 years past the, the eight that she had lived, so hmm. her death... She didn't look 800 years old at all. She, she looked, didn't look a day over 300. Um, <laughs> so uh, did we her... graduate, or did we, like, fail before she... We're still level one! <laughs> Are we the best students she ever had? Uh, but per the instructions of her last will and testament, uh, Elaria was buried uh, in a very simple ceremony, um, kind of uh, out of the way. Uh, and it, while many of the people here in the town uh, came to see her laid to rest, you were the only students that were able to attend given the short notice. Uh, Galana, the local dwarf priestess who runs the Holy Beacon Temple uh, of the God of Light, sort of asked you each to, to say a few words uh, at the eulogy. Um, and so, uh, so real quick before we dive into review, viewer decision, you were all kind of asked to share maybe one one quick like a memory or something that the elf taught you, maybe an unexpected lesson or something. So, what was it that you all shared at her funeral? Uh, we'll we'll start with uh, we'll start with Will. Um, Draco says uh, she followed the old code, and she was. Uh, my master for a long time taught me many things in Camelot about justice, about goodness, and well, I always had a bit of a crush for her. Alas, it's never going to work out. Uh, an elf and a dragonborn, well, I'm the last of my kind, so I guess that now is hope is gone. I'll nice step back. Rip. Give, give you a pat on the back. What about you, uh, Del, uh, Daryl? I, I, I give Draco a pat on the back. Just, just kind of like you'll, 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 you'll just kind of that look. Like you'll, you'll get some someday. You'll, you'll spread <laughs> your, your, your dragon seed, my friend. But in like conveyed no look. And then uh, we'll. I want to go up. Just kind of wordless and take out my loot. I'm gonna start my sweet solo. Bling 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 this is why Twitch clips were invented. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you, do you say anything, or do you, do you just kind of play That's it. that? That's it. I lay the I lay the loot down on the on the on the grave. And uh, and what about you, uh, Slapnut? Uh, Slapnut. He goes up to the grave, and he takes this like the moldiest wheel of cheese you've ever seen, and he lays it down on there. And he's kind of a. Uh, <laughs> I once thought I was the oldest person alive. Until I met Hilaria. Damn it, now I am again. <laughs> he just walks away. All right. Um, and so, uh, so as you kind of, uh, as you, the, the funeral ended and you guys made your way to the holy beacon, uh, the temple, um, for the reading of the will and stuff, uh, we're going to, we're going to get that viewer decision going. So what I want you to know is, the uh, we will get to the will in in a second, but in the will specifically, there is something mentioned about a vault where Alaria left all of her wealth, all of her knowledge, and her power. Uh, and I want to know what, from you guys what they're going to find in that vault when they finally open it. So throw us your ideas in chat. What yeah. is what is in the master's vault? Is it treasure? Is it a portal to another dimension? Is it a monster? Is it... Uh, I don't know, maybe it's something else. Maybe maybe the, the vault is complete myth and there's something else there. You it's in the box. Yeah. The, the giant stone box. 
It's the golden tunnel. Surely not. <laughs> Surely not again. <laughs> so let's uh, let's get those let's get those collated real quick, um, and then we will uh, we'll get some voting on them. But while that is going on, let me uh, let me scroll back up here. So the dog uh, I want to vote with a vote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so inside the temple. Um, the, uh, the, the, you, you've met a woman named Yelsa, who is not, not a priest, she's actually the solicitor, uh, and she is the one that is handling the will, uh, of the master. Um, and as she kind of brings you all into a room on the side, and I don't know why I still have rats going on, give me one second, I gotta change my, change my music. Uh, what's a Turkey good... Dumpling's been getting busy. Yeah, Elvin Vale. Yeah, where, did Terry, what's the life expectancy of a rat? Of who? Of a rat? Of, of a giant rat, like turkey dumpling. My, my, my pet sleeping rat. Actually, it was sleeping. Was it like non-feral the second it woke up? <laughs> uh, we'll say that you can you spend some time kind of, t- uh, you know, taming it. Okay. Uh... All right, so uh, so you guys are in the temple, and uh, Yelsa has kind of brought you, and and one of the priests has brought you into this room, and they are going to uh, they're going to read the will, and you guys were uh, were supposed to be there to to kind of officiate and possibly being her last students, possibly be beneficiaries. Uh, they couldn't really get any of our other students or next of kin on short notice, so you guys are here witnessing it. So, uh, Yelsa kind of unseals a small envelope with an EF pressed into its wax seal, uh, and as she pulls forth the letter, uh, the, the no speaks in a low gravel tone. She says, Now, as I said at the services, Alaria included you in her last will and testament. She has no family, and you are the only people mentioned in the document. She wanted me to read aloud and then give you the following instructions. My gold has dwindled in 800 years, but there is some left, so be all ears. My mansion, my treasures, all are yours. If you can open the last of my doors, (laughs) the vault in my backyard is the final test. You must work together to complete this quest. <laughs> the doors can be opened with strength of the mind. But before you attempt, find the tiles, all nine. Uh, and then she so, says... The vault's in her back door or something, did she say? Yeah. Um, let's, let's get the shovel. She says, uh, no, there's a, there's a little bit more, but it's not all that important. She says, um... Three are hidden where she creeps and crawls. Uh, I'm sorry, four are hidden where she creeps and crawls. Uh, one with eight legs and venomous jaws. That's, that doesn't rhyme. Um, uh, three are entrusted to ones born of the dragons. Uh, who cannot be reached by boats or wagons. And the last are buried with a friend long forgotten. Who lingers long after our body is rotten. Uh, unlock the vault, do not delay, for others are hunting my treasure this day. Uh, every moment you wait puts people at risk, so take up the task and please be brisk. Um, there's, there's a little bit more, but you get the idea. Right, actually. Nine tiles, yeah? It says, well, three are entrusted to one born of dragons who cannot be raised by boats or wagons, so it's in the sky, I look. I just discovered everything. All right, let me open this. Is there anything in the sky? Yeah, look uh, up. <laughs> it's like it's like ten feet above us. It's like four little tiles. You're over. you're inside, so there's nothing in the sky above you right now. <laughs> oh, oh, <man. laughs> look up anyway. Look at this blank ceiling, just kind of like. Oh, yeah, it's up there. Vote. Oh. All it's right, so it looks like we got the uh, the straw poll underway, so good on you with that. So as she kind of rolls it up, she says, uh, bah, 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 bah. Oh, um, uh, 
you, so you all kind of you all kind of remember that there is a stone trap door behind the mansion that was kind of always locked and it didn't have a key. You guys had seen it before, but you just kind of learned to ignore it as it didn't seem to really do anything. And Alari had never talked about it. Um, the the door itself now you remember it did sort of have a have a little kind of divot in it that could easily fit small tiles. Um, mm. So perhaps you that is that revolved. door that was always somewhat strange. Lara used to call it her back doors. And yes. If you smash them in, she was rather... It was, the one, it was the one door I couldn't just smash my way through. I, like, put my, took my axe. Perhaps we could try again. It might be down into her vault, if you know what I mean. To find that treasure, yes, yeah, and I... But where do we start? And we... I keep sitting. So, uh, so, uh... Uh, Draco, you kind of, you kind of know that the uh, the ones born of dragons are. Be you don't have any family left, um, which is why you think you're the last of them. But you do know, uh, you do know that there is, there is a uh, uh, a a nest. Uh, it's actually a cave that is on, that is reached by a. Um, uh, by a bridge from the f- it's it's near the mine and no one's been no one really goes there anymore be- but uh, it's actually uh, you hear you know it's pretty empty but people o- in town always refer to it as the dragon's cave okay i'll bring this up the tale speaks of three dragons and i know there is a Dragon Cave nearby is what it's called, at least. With boats and wagons. Yes. Well, okay. you can't be reached by boats and wagons, right? What about I thought, a... I thought they rode boats and wagons. I, I I know. I I think it couldn't be reached by boats and wagons, which would suggest, like this cave, you cannot reach the cave by boat or yeah, by. The door's really small. You can't get a wagon or boat inside. Well, if I recall, nor a boat, nor a toad can carry the burden. You Only do not. this is for certain. That if only we to... had Trist or Odin. See? Thank, thank God we killed Trist all those years ago. Yes, yes, yes. He's the first, he's the first test. <laughs> Trist is always the first test. <laughs> That's why they're all they're all the students are dead. So what do you so what do you guys want to do? I, I want to go to a back door. Like, you want to go to the back door yeah. or you want to go to the cave? I wanna, yeah. I wanna, I'll I'll take the cave. You take the back door. We'll do it at the same time. Well, you know the the you know what do you want to what do you want to try and do with the back door because you don't have the tiles yet. <laughs> oh man, um, let's go to the dragon cave actually. <laughs> That's what she calls it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys, you guys make your way down to the mines, um, and there, you know, nearby, there's this kind of cave that you have to take like a winding switch back up one of the uh, the nearby forest covered mountains just outside of town. And as you're you're making your way up, you can see sort of this cave looming beyond. And once you get inside. You guys are, you kind of strike up some torches and you're standing in this cave that actually, um, it actually seems to be called the Dragon's Den because the opening almost looks like a dragon mouth. Hmm. Family member of yours? I look over to Draco. All of my kind are dead. Family member of yours? I look back at if I can't look back at the... <laughs> Or a skull looking dragon face. <laughs> He's uh, long gone now, just like the rest of my kind. They're like, uh, I imagine we live in a world which dragons just fly by all the time, you know? Just, <laughs> <laughs> you never look up. <laughs> <laughs> just always soaking, staring at the ground, kicking your feet. And so you were. 360 for following Welcome to the Adventure, my friends, or a gentleman and a scholar. So you wanna you wanna make your way down deeper into the cave? I'll go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So as you as you follow in, much like the the rumor said, this cave seems to be mostly empty. However, 
I need the dwarf to roll me a perception check. That's right. I will roll your checks, boy. Which I will give you. I will give you advantage on this. You will give me that advantage, boy, and take a nat twenty. Nat twenty. Boy. As you uh, as you get to the back of the cave, there is a fairly large space that you could you you see could easily lend to the rumor that this might be a dragon's lair. But uh, but you guys are looking around without any luck. Like it looks like this is just an empty kind of mountain cave. Uh, however, as Slapnut is used to tunneling and you know digging through the rocks and kind of s understanding the earth, he walks right up to the back of the cave and he notices there is actually a secret door, almost probably of dwarven construction that has been carved into the back of the mountain. And you know, as dwarf doors, they are almost invisible when they're closed. Well, uh, I check. I check to see if it's locked, because uh, there, there. The door doesn't seem to be locked. It just seems to be... You don't know how to open it. I belch really loudly, because that usually works. All right. Uh, well, uh, that's the dwarf passcode. <laughs> you, uh, what should, what, should he roll to belch, do you think? <laughs> Almost certainly, yes. All right, roll, roll to belch. Okay, well, what, what would I roll for belching? Uh, roll a constitution check. Uh... Okay. Let's see, can You have a you have an amazing constitution. So. Oh yeah. You let out the loudest kind of echoing belch that you have ever heard. And uh it's it just reverberates through the cave and it shakes like it actually starts shaking pebbles and dirt from the ceiling. And uh and once it is once it kind of finishes you hear a, a loud grinding sound as the door begins to open. I, uh, Sorry. <laughs> All right, folks. Let's uh, hop on down there through this little pathway and uh, see what comes out the other side. I, uh, do, 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 do. I always do. Uh -huh. And I head on. All right. As you make your way through this tunnel, you can see the tunnel has been carved uh, it's a smooth stone tunnel and it kind of leads deeper into the mountain but as you get deeper and deeper you can actually see flickering light it seems like there is light at the end of the tunnel uh, torchlight actually or, fi or flickering firelight and it's fairly bright um, and you can actually hear noises I uh, hunker down and listen to these noises to see if I, I can... hear the noises of get wrecked noobs welcome <laughs> that's actually what you hear a shout of you're a gentleman and scholar. You hear one of the voices echoing says, Get wrecked, noob! Just a bunch of Xbox <laughs> players playing Call of Duty. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you, you listen in. There are, there are quite a few voices. Uh, they're a little bit deep, a little bit kind of growl, gravelly and growly, but um, they're, there's clearly a bunch of them, and they're coming from not far down the hallway. I'm going to, like, army crawl my way down the hallway to right. like get a little closer so I can seize him as you kind of turn the corner with your head like down real real low and look around what you appear to be looking you, you, you're you looking on a large cavern that seems to have been set up almost like a like a campsite or there are tents there are like some temporary wood or like wooden structures there are firelight there's firelight and torches and there are people walking around and all of the people appear to be dragonborn. I, uh, motion over Draco. Hey, Draco, come here. Uh, what is it? You know how you said that you were the last? Yes, yes, I am. Eh, uh, you might want to, eh, uh, just look at it, uh, uh, and I kind of, hear like, motion point on the pathway to where the dragonborn are. I... This cannot be. These these can't be real. Oh, what will my eyes deceive me? <laughs> I uh well uh, feel free to uh maybe just go check them out, investigate. I, I can wait here, and if you need help, let me know. I will okay. go and speak with them. Yes. All right. As you uh, as you kind of stride around the corner into the camp, someone first catches a glimpse of you, and then others. And they, uh, their eyes go wide, and 
they uh, they kind of all go hush. They say, the, there's another one. Uh, another one? That and I am the only one. <laughs> one of them kind of steps forward to you. He says, friend, we are... We are the last of our kind. No, no. No, I am the last of my kind. Yes, you are. Well, among them. This is, wait, you, are you a dragonborn? <laughs> yes. You, do, does the scales give it away? I am just checking, you see. I've gone all this time. Believing that I am the last of them. Do you follow the old code? The kind of say, <laughs> the, the old code. The old code. The old. And then, like, they all kind of turn their heads, and you see um, at the back of the cave is a large stone altar with candles and, uh, and like, drawings on the wall um, of, the, like, crude drawings of knights in battle and heraldry and stuff. And you see on this sort of standing plinth, stone plinth, is an open book that is just a, a huge tome. The old code. They kind of nod I... and say, the old code, we have kept it safe for, for decades. This is incredible news, are there? Females amongst your number. There are a few, yes. Well, you see, I need to spread my dragon seed. Right. Why have you come, friend? How did you find us? <laughs> I think he just explained his ways, my well, friend. I, 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 I was led here by my, my master, Laria, who passed away recently. We're looking for her vault, and I stumbled. Well, my, my friends are also here. Um, uh, Slapnut, and I, and, uh, and and the other one. You can come, come. <laughs> they say, "Damn, we, we we know of Valaria. She right. helped us establish uh, our hiding place when we were and driven out of the told land." Me. No. Uh, Why? We, that was that was hundreds of years ago. Well, she's eight hundred years old. It's like yesterday for her. We. She, the the legend has it that she left us with these and they kind of go over to the altar and they take a small box and the as they open it you see the box has a an assortment of like square tiles with letters on them what what are those they are the four tiles that she left us uh, what what is that purpose we don't know we 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 were told that she needed to keep them safe. Uh, they go in her back door. Ah, yes. They will let us enter her vault. May I take these brothers and sisters and future wives? Yes, yes. Uh, you, if you are disciples of Alaria, they must pass on to you. Thank you, my friends. I will return shortly to spread said seed and to make sure that our race continues uh, this is excellent news so uh, so as you were kind of gifted this box of tiles they uh, you, you kind of nod and they they all kind of look very excited at uh, being like that there are possibly being able to bring the dragonborn back into the world and come out of hiding as they have clearly been doing for quite a while. Yeah, uh, yeah. And also thank you to Pulpy Priest for following. Welcome to the adventure, my friends. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Yeah, you jealous, boy? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, as you uh, as you guys make your way out of the cave, you have four of the nine tiles. There's only five now, more. There's five more yet. Find five more. Where would she keep them? It's just, this is four where she creeps and crawls and one with eight legs and venomous jaws. Uh, that sounds like a spider. Or a crab. Or a crab, yes, yeah, some kind of association. Some sort of arthropod. Hmm. Arachnid. All of those things, yes. Or a human after too many bad spells. 
Are you asking for the riddle for the location of further tiles? Yes, we are. Yes. It's not a toad, nor a chode. In fact, we must follow the old code. Right to the tunnel's node, we shall goad. I'm, I'm not quite sure that last bit was, was right, but the, the, the old code was definitely, uh, definitely correct. Um, in that case, we need to go to this Chode town that you speak of, where I've never, never heard of Chode. Sounds like a of a northern town. It's a wide area, kind of like a knoll. Ah, yeah. hmm. well, wide. You're familiar well, well, with halflings that live underground. Very sad. I, I am, yes, yes, indeed. So we need to find this halfling Chode. Perhaps you, we could you ask actually, around town. You actually, um, uh, Daryl, you know there is a there is a tale of deep in the woods. Um, there is a, a population of of halfling chodes, and <laughs> they 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 kind of um, they're notoriously fickle fey creatures, uh, and that part of the but the 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 reason that your the reason that that tale is kind of fresh in your memory is because. Um, like woodsmen and travelers have said that part of the forest has grown dark recently and large sections of web and um, cobwebs have appeared amongst the trees so, so uh, is this that where we're going? yes? Toadland? I'd say so off to the toadlings <laughs> All right. So you you trek off into the woods, into uh, the woods to uh, to the north, over this way, and as you guys uh, as you guys travel into the forest, it's normal at first. Like the the going is fairly straightforward. Let me find a dark forest because I know I have one. Um, it's uh, it's yeah, it's it's fairly fairly easy going at first, but um. At after a while, it kind of gets, it kind of gets darker. The trees, um, the the trees become more dense, and the light has a harder time shining through. Uh, and as you're kind of making your way in, you can see like the signs all around you of like little little kind of holes dug in the dirt. Um, Chode holes. Chode holes. Yeah, they're. Uh, they're not very deep, but they are wide. Just like a cheese wheel. <laughs> or a chodling. Hmm. Uh, tell me, Daryl, I've, I've never met one of these halflings from Chode. What are they, what are they like? What are they, how do we bar with them? They're a bit obtuse. I see. So hard to get going. Yes. <laughs> Mythical creatures of sorts. Often you'll find them in shorts. But they are indeed very real, despite being fake creatures. Absolutely. Good, good. Then uh, we will let you treat with the chodes, who seem to be uh, well-versed in their ways. So I'm going to... Personal experience. Take some... Take, like... Triangles out. Mm-hmm. You know, like, a, like a copper triangle. And kind of, like, skip around. And and just hit the hit the triangle and tempo and beat. Are you are you trying to draw out the chodes? <laughs> chodes, oh chodes, bring us to your mother loads. Chodes, oh chodes. <laughs> oh my god! I'm so sorry, James. I, I imagine it's like the Wizard of Oz when the Munchkins all start coming out. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much to a happy chodling for following. Welcome to <laughs> <laughs> the Elephant Chode! Follow the Elephant Chode! A chuckle to the Elephant Chode! Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I know. You. Um, so, as you, uh, as you guys are doing this, like, you see, kind of, actually, roll, everyone roll me a perception check. It's tough to spot a chode in, in the long grass. These, these placid chodes. Chode Grove? Chode Grove. 
you showed growth or something. <laughs> uh, my perception is a 15. 17. So you you all can you all see like in the darkness around you in the the kind of shadow of the trees, um, little little kind of heads peeking out of these holes, and um, you know then then they quickly go back they they quickly duck back in. Um, but after as you're kind of wandering around, aware that all these there are all these creatures in the woods around you, um, you kind of see one of them just very very slowly kind of peek his head out from behind a tree near you. He says. Hey! Hey! Uh, what are you doing here? Are you a chode? Or do my eyes deceive me? Uh, well, um, I, I don't like that term, but... <laughs> what would you prefer? Chodling? Chodle? <laughs> Chodler? We're, um... Chodle we're just, we're just size Chodle impaired. <laughs> 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 I see. Uh, well, um, we, we're here. Little, little chosen. <laughs> he says, uh, You gotta be careful in these woods, or, or, or she'll get you. Or she'll make us get you. Who will get us? Who? Oh. Slap not, uh, meet the show. Yes, uh, yes uh, little Mr. Mr. Choda. You, you, can, you can come on up more. I mean, it's, it's not that cold. I've got another one. Chode of Chode Hall. <laughs> ah. Where'd you get that all the time? Uh, he kind of, he says, uh, I mean, I Ixiana, the Spider Queen. Sp 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 is this Spider Queen? Sp 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 spider Queen? Sp spider Queen? Sp spider Queen? Spider Queen! Spider Queen! Spider Queen. <laughs> does whatever Spider Queen does. Well, Mr. Toad, how can we escape such uh, a terrifying foe as the Spider Queen if you yourself are totally in stature? We ourselves are not. She, she enslaved us all. She makes us, makes us rob travelers. That is against the old code. Yes. It is! Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to execute you for that. <laughs> what? No! No! Her! Oh. You have to kill her! First of all, tell us where we can find the Spider Queen, little trouble. Uh, you, you have to delve into the spider forest, uh, where all it's the web worse. is, and then... It's so much worse because it's Sean Connery talking to us. <laughs> <laughs> Please take me to your chuckle. <laughs> and take she me says, to your chuckle, Queen. She says, if you, if you delve into the the spider forest, there's a there's a lair made entirely of web. That's what she is. <laughs> I'm sure. Did you it. make it? No. I, Did you I delve can't make too web? deep and too greedily? Sorry, what'd you say? Did you delve too deep and too greedily? Uh, she she controls the forest now. She makes the webs. Show us the is, way. Is, is there treasure in there? Will we have a shot at money? Uh, uh, I think sometimes she takes things from uh, from travelers when she eats them. And we will have a money shot. Good. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so you... Yes. Um, Lead us the way. What is your name, little chode? Uh, I'm... I'm I'm little Timmy. Little Timmy. Mm -hmm. I see. Yes. Well, little Timmy Chode, show us the way to your spider queen. Oh, yes, Chode. yes. Let's follow this fellow named Chode. Follow the fellow named Chode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, uh, she says. No, he says. Um, uh, very well. Uh, I'll take you there, but I, I can't go in. She'll eat me. Imagine you can't get in a lot of places. <laughs> Uh, uh, on the contrary, I imagine you can no, fit in. No, I, I can fit all kinds of places. I'm glad to hear it, Timmy. Now, please, walk along the way. All right. So you follow the uh, you follow the yellow dick chode. Um, for you don't know this, but they do have yellow dicks. Um, yes. Oh man, my nose is itching. 
crazy day. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, the, the, the chode leaves you deep into the forest, and you guys, like, as the trees close in, you can see these sort of large cobwebs that are, that span the trees and cast long shadows. Um, and it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's getting kind of, kind of spooky, but, um, but you, uh, you, you forge on deeper and deeper, and eventually the trees become entirely draped in webs, and the, they run thick across, you know, across the, the branches and stuff, blocking, you know, different ways, almost forming, like, entire walls through the forest and as you're you're coming up on it you can see sort of towering amongst the trees is just this whole wall made of webbing and in it's it's pretty much solid except for this one hole that uh that has been created that is a fairly large hole like it's bigger than all of you <laughs> um and he says she, she's in there m most of the time Yes, well, I just make sure you stay away from those webs. They'll get you sticky. I uh, take my axe and shield and start heading into the hole. All right. I uh, I pat Timmy under his little chuddly head. <laughs> First, <laughs> you just, <laughs> you just <laughs> the forever pat me. I didn't say, uh, uh, Timmy. I'm going to give you something for your help, but I'm going to ask that you do not rob anyone else because it breaks the old code. Take this helmet and place it upon yourself. It will remind you at all times to follow the old code. Yeah, is, is it your helmet? No. It's just a helmet you have? It, w it wouldn't fit. It's a chuggling helmet. <laughs> it's a burlap sack. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, as, you, uh, as you kind of you give him this little sort of toy helmet that you just happen to have you put it on his head he kind of looks up he says ah, I'll be brave it's like little Bob the Builder helmet <laughs> good man and I head on into the spider web alright as you guys make your way into the spider's lair um you uh oh, give me one second I'm gonna find some stuff four four gonna kind of dance as I cut away <laughs> the, the webs with with uh, my daggers. <laughs> Thank you to the dark shadow elf princess for following. Welcome to the adventure, my friends. You're a gentle princess. You like those like glow stick twirlers that like raves and stuff. <laughs> the moves. Like those like those cotton candy makers who do like the dances. He's grabbing the spider. <laughs> so, like, like a big giant. So as you guys are kind of cutting through and trying to make your way through this labyrinth. Of a of a web castle, you kind of you hear a a chittering like a ch -ch 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 echoing through the uh, echoing through the place, and then you hear you hear kind no, of a want the chode of us. Yeah, no, no chode right now. Uh, you hear a voice sort of continue reverberating along the the walls and in the caverns and stuff, and it says. Brave of you to come into my domain. Uh, yes, hello. My name is Draco. I was the last of my kind, but now I'm not. We're here to find some tile pieces from Alaria. You can come for whatever you like. You cannot have my wealth. But you will make fine meals. Okay. Are, are you complimenting me on my on my cooking? Like, do I make good meals? What's what's she talking about? I believe she's doing the uh, the old evil talk right now. Ah. She just tells us her master plan, but unfortunately for her, we follow the old code. <laughs> and I, so I draw my sword. <laughs> So as you draw your sword, you are emerging into this large chamber um, that it's like a high vaulted ceiling. It's very, very dark in here. I uh, use my dark vision to make it not look so dark for me. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty empty, um, but you can see the the 
uh, you can make out along the ground lots of little kind of holes in the ground. Not like chode holes. These look different. Um, and uh, as you guys walk out into the center of the room, uh, kind of looking around, there's there's nothing around you right now. There's just You're just in this giant chamber. You just hear more of that kind of chode. Why don't you come out and places. fight us? Uh, roll me a perception check, everyone. Uh, okay, let's see. Perceptions. Right, team. Oh boy, yeah, uh, five. <laughs> and then five. Nice. All right, Draco, you you're kind of saying this, and uh, as Burley, you kind of turn around as you hear more of that noise. Uh, and just because of your dark vision, you manage to catch it, though you're a second too late, as you see this large spider form is lowering itself down behind Draco. He's not looking at it, just completely silently, and as it, as you kind of turn around, your eyes go wide, Draco, you feel this thing jab you right in the back. <gasps> oh, oh, it let go of me. Uh, and as that, as kind of the Draco is hit by this, the, this kind of jab, this stinger, um, and feels kind of the burning poison sensation pulsing uh, through him, everyone else, we are going to roll some initiative. Oh, shit. Okay. Let me get some, uh, some, some music here. I don't know if I right. did one. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Ooh. Nice. Yes, we are winners. We are winners. We are the best. We are the best. The best of ever was. No one's ever gonna keep us down. Oh, uh. <laughs> Damn, Richard. Alright. Chode <laughs> Nation. It's now a thing. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I mean, I blame you, Tracy. You brought us up. <laughs> <laughs> we just ran like beautiful here. riddle. Hello, <laughs> little, little chodlings. Oh, little did you know. All right. So, as the uh, as everything is going on, you guys, uh, let's get that there. And I don't know if I have a spider. Uh, draw one. Oh, I do. Ah. Uh, Red Phoenix, uh, Chris doesn't have his own uh, Twitch channel, but you can find his game there, and you can find his website uh, there as well. He doesn't stream himself. Um, he might end up doing it. Who knows? You could ask him to. He seems to enjoy it. So. All right. So the giant spider is going to get twenty-two. Ah. Uh, what do you get, Will? Five. <laughs> Five. What did you get, uh, Trainzy? Seven. Okay, seven. And Slapna got a seven. Yeah. All right. So yeah, as he's we, up and it's still faster than us. As as this thing kind of has stabbed, uh, has stabbed Draco, it is then going to kind of wrap its, uh, it, you know, some of its legs around him, and it's going to, uh, Draco, it is going to grapple you. Uh, it's going to roll a grapple check against you, which is, uh, let me check something here because. I believe it's an opposed strength check, but, uh... <laughs> yeah. So, what's up, Kai? Let's go and lead. Uh, I can roll a strength check. Yeah, anyway. we'll, we'll say we'll say a strength check. Uh, it is going to roll a strength check against you to, uh... Roll to 10. To attempt to grab <laughs> I literally can't roll anything over 10 today. Okay. Spider's weak. Yeah, so this the uh, the spider is going to attempt to uh, kind of um, uh, start grabbing you with its legs and using its spinnerets to kind of uh, co- like cover you in web. But you uh, you kind of push through. The poison hasn't quite hit you. Actually, I do need you to make me a Constitution save against the poison. But you're kind of pushing against it, and you manage to tear to at least use your sword to cut free of the webs. Uh, before we see if the poison has taken hold. Constitution. Uh, Constitution. Did I take any damage as well, by the way? Oh, yeah, you did. 
Um, I heard a five. God damn! Why can't I not roll? Oh! <laughs> Kill me now. <laughs> let me. Uh, by the way, let me grab these tokens. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys. Ah, jeez, ah, jeez, man. Uh, so yeah, you took you took three points of damage from the stab. Correct. Uh, and you feel sluggish as the poison begins to hit you. Uh, Slapnut, you can see him be yeah. attempting to be wrapped up. What do you want to do? Um, I do not like the fact that the spider's doing this to my friend. Uh, how big is the spider? Like, large? Huge? We've actually known each other for five years, our characters. Like, we've remained friends for five yeah. years. Our oh, us lot. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, I don't, I don't like this guy messing up my buddy. Um, so I'm going to, uh... Take out hand, uh, the great big battle axe, and I just want to. Uh, I just want to go straight onto the spider's face because if if it's tangoing with me, then it can't tangle with my friend. It's only because only two can tango. Okay. I'm just gonna go chop, go chop crazy. Like, yeah, you damn shit! He starts, you know, all <laughs> Say swear words. All right, make some make some chop attacks. Make Scottish Whoa. noises. Twelve. It, this creature is large and it is currently attempting to grapple Draco, so a twelve is enough to hit it. Boom! Five slashing damage because I rolled a one on that damage roll. But ha! Ah! It feels the pain. Feels the pain. All right, you uh you chop into this thing and it takes some hurt. Uh, and... See, uh, what does second wind do? It says I got second wind. Is that where I can do uh, another? Check right now. Look at I'm watching this. See, I'm just gonna think. Uh, uh, so. Second wind. Uh, oh, you have a limited points. blah blah blah. On your turn, you can use a bonus action to regain hit points equal to one d ten plus your fighter level. So you just wait. You got me. I'm gonna regain my HP, spider lady. Yeah, he hasn't hit you yet, so. <laughs> yeah. Already done. Already regained it. Oh, I, <laughs> yes, I, come on, there, we part. Get our friend out of this cocoon of death trap. Uh, Daryl, what do you want to do? Also, thank you to Chode Lingus for following. Welcome to Adventure, my friend. <laughs> You're a gentleman and a scholar. Dear God, guys. Oh my God. Um. <laughs> I'm just gonna attack with my uh, short sword, kind of um, towards one of the legs of the spiders, if, if I can. That's attempting to wrap our friend up. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I think you're swinging your flute. <laughs> oh! It's like in Legend of Zelda when you stop to play on the ocarina. <laughs> oh, a six. One second, I gotta, uh, I just had to, to, to let everyone know that you guys were rescuing the chodlings, for, the chode gnomes from a giant spider. Uh, so what'd you roll? Six. Uh, a six is not enough to hit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like staring away from it because I'm kind of afraid. So I'm uh, like, oh, look Does this guy ever do anything? Is <laughs> 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 that bad? <laughs> No, not, not really. <laughs> We've been All carrying right. him for the past five years. <laughs> so, uh, so Draco, you you are poisoned. You are at disadvantage on your attacks, but you are closest to the spider. What do you want to do? Uh, this is me, sorry. Yes. Okay. Draco. Uh, so can I attack it? Yeah, you you're just at disadvantage. Uh, what do I have to do to break free? No, you you already broke out oh, of the, the web. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. Long sword, spider ass, 12, oh, oh no, we'll 7. Do it, yeah. No, it's disadvantage, so 7. Oh, yeah, you're right, 7. Uh, yeah, you kind of swing, but the spider sort of pulls itself back. Do you, uh, did you want to try and use your fire breath too? Because you have that. I guess, it's DC 11 for her. For, uh, what, dexterity? Uh, yep. Okay. Oh, her dexterity is real good. Oh, uh, oh! On a nat one, uh, you so you're you kind of bellow your fire breath, and it hits her, um, where she's going to take five damage. But not only that, on a nat one, she uh, you actually burn the webbing that is holding her to the ceiling, and she drops down onto her back, 
So she is going yeah. to be prone for at least the next round. This is what I wanted to be. That's how he likes his ladies. All right. My spiders. <laughs> so, uh, anything else? Do you wanna? Do you wanna do? Or do you wanna like? No, my turn's good then. Okay. Uh, the, she, the spider queen is kind of flailing around trying to get off of its back, and the only thing that it can it's do. Like, right. You know when I'm falling down from the ceiling, like onto her. Do I like bring my sword down onto her? Uh, you like, no no she, you weren't on the ceiling. She came down to you. Oh, she came down. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I hold my sword up as she falls down. <laughs> <laughs> she was no, she was at your level. She didn't fall that far. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So she is going to use her. Uh, she's gonna make a ranged web attack at ah! a random person because she can't target. She's so shoot with her butt. One d three. Uh, Draco, you're one. Slapnut, you're two. Daryl, you're three. Draco, oh. it's at you. Oh, she's oh. mad at you. Uh, a twelve against you. Not a hit. All right. So you just sort of duck as this webbing fires over your head, and that is going to be her turn. Slapnut, what do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to, like, reach into my backpack, grab out a python and a hammer, and I want to kind of, like, jump onto, the, like, her uh, thorax and kind of try to, like, pin her to the ground while she's back on her back. Okay. Um... It makes that noise. You, you, you don't want to just, you're not going to just use your, your axe, you're actually going to attempt to nail her to the ground? Yeah, I'm going to nail the spider. Sure. Um, uh, did, did, Pinner. are you trying to nail, like, her body or her legs? Well, like, like her thorax, like how you, like, pin a spider, like, you, like, people collect bugs. Okay, this is a big pin. spider, so your python oh. probably isn't going to go all the way through. Eh, what ground. about a crowbar? Crowbar might do it, yeah. Okay, I'm going to use my crowbar then. Roll me a, roll me a, <laughs> roll me a strength check. Check. To hammer this thing in. Shit! Seven. As you uh, you kind of bam hit the hammer and it kind of <laughs> the, the spider kind of jerks, but it doesn't penetrate through the carapace. Damn it! So I'm just sitting here like straddling the spider's thorax, like uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Daryl, what do you want to do? Um. Try and put it to sleep again, but not really. This is no simple child we're fighting here. <laughs> um, it's an arachnoid. One does I'll, not. I'll like, I'll like realize that I didn't make contact with my sword the last time, and then I'll, I'll look at it, kind of with an emboldened look, and like take put two hands and, and, and try and swing at it again. Okay, uh, it's on its back, so you can get advantage on your attack. 18 or 19? Uh, 19 will do it, yeah. Four damage. All right. <laughs> As you uh, you kind of drive your spike into the fat sort of abdomen section uh, of this spider, and it kind of lets out a screech in pain uh, as you, you stab it through its side. Anything else you want to do? Um, I, 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 like, like. I want to shift around to keep myself... On its backside, if possible. <laughs> okay, you can also use your, you, like can, that. you can use your swift action to give inspiration if you'd like. I can. I thought yeah. it was a bardic inspiration bonus. Oh, it is a bonus action. Yeah. <gasps> I will. Uh, I will attempt. Um. To to give bardic inspiration to uh, a friend. Draco. Thank you, my friend. All right. Yes. So, uh, how, what is it, what does your inspiration sound like? Um. <clears throat> oh, he's gotta get repositioned for this. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. Thank you to Lou Smurf for following. You're a gentleman and scholar. Do not fear or dode. We shall beat this queen of the chodes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, we shall, as I control my sword. All right, Draco, you can take your 1d6 inspiration dice. Uh, as your turn is coming up, what do you want to do? Uh, my turn, sorry. All right, we're going to... Mm, I'm going to slap it again with my sword. Uh, 16. Uh, with advantage, you get a 20. 
20. Fuck yeah. 20 for 5 slashing damage. Okay. I feel like I'm living the cliche of the like Skyrim bard. <laughs> 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 Alright, uh, I gotta check something because I don't know how it works. Um... I am Jodva King. Jodva King! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, so you you stab this thing with your sword once again, uh, and it is it is now on the ropes. It this thing is you know is bleeding out of multiple wounds. Um, on its turn, uh, unless there's anything you want to do, Draco. No, I want to stay in combat with it on its back. Okay. Uh, as it kind of flips over, finally, it is going to start scrambling backwards. Up the or uh, up the wall, like try and get up the wall. However, Slapnut, you are on top of this thing, so you, right. get, you get to attempt to attack it before it uh, before it gets away. I am. I'm going to uh, ask this spider a question. All right. You get my joke. I will. I will give you advantage because uh, you are right on top of it. That's right. Be gone, foul beast. Seventeen for eleven. Seventeen will do it. For how much damage? Eleven. All right. How do you wanna? How do you wanna destroy this thing? Okay. Well, it says right here that my bond is my devastating finishing moves was taught to me by Elaria Feywing. So like, as it's like trying to get away, I like you know, think of my old dead master and like of course the ultimate move she taught me, the power of the Kegels, <laughs> which I wrap my legs around the spider's face and I just do like a Sonya Blade kind of <laughs> and smash its head within me. And thanks to uh, Foxy, Wolfopolis, and Echo for the hosts. Thank you guys. All right. So as you kind of you leap back and you grip between your muscular dwarven thighs this spider's head, and you just and you squeeze as you feel those muscles along your inner thighs tensing. The spider's carapace starts to crack, and then onto Draco, who's right up in front of it. There is a as the goo from the spider's head just explodes out all over your face. He thinks it's from the spider's head. <laughs> I say, excellent work there. This is the fierce, this layer of chords has been slain by a chode. And I pull my pants up. Oh, that was... Oh. Well, uh, well, where are these tiles? We must search for them in order to open the vault door to Alaria's vault. Yep. Oh, they're right there. Ah, yes, they are. I pick them up. Yeah, you see nearby <laughs> there's kind of a kind of a pile of junk that this spider has looted uh, or hoarded for itself. Uh, and as you start rooting through it, you find a similar wooden box uh, to the one that the Dragonborn gave you uh, that contains f the tiles, the four tiles that belong to the Chodes. And also there is a small there is a small pouch. Uh, a leather pouch that you find among the uh, among the goods that contains the final tile. Oh, nice! A good old pile of tiles. Yes. Excellent. And so the titles are. Uh, I will. I'm gonna give you here one second. No wait. Give me, give me one second. I gotta there figure. More clues. I gotta figure this out. Or puzzles, I see. Hmm. Why is this taking so long? I don't know. <laughs> Five for one, I'm most enraged by this. <laughs> Alright, cool, I got it. So. Okay. Oh, by the way, I'll take the point on the hour to remind you guys if you're new to Encounter Roleplay, hit that follow button and join us. We're having another viewer decision where you guys decide what happens next uh, in uh, 30 followers. So um, go ahead and follow if you haven't already. We're here five nights a week, 10 shows every single week as well. Also, we've got a 24 hour DD stream happening this Saturday, um, which is pretty cool. Next Tuesday, uh, Mr. Ed Greenwood is coming on the show to chat about his latest projects and books and to give away some copies of those as well, which is pretty sweet. Um, also, there is a tweet, which wants to bring the boat back online because he killed himself. Sometimes Moldock decides to Sudoku whilst he's on his laptop. Um, I'll link to you guys so you can retweet that. All right, and so you're good? Those, uh, those letters that I just typed in chat, those, um, as you're kind of looking at the tiles, they all have a letter on them, and that is the, mm. the, the list of the letters. 
the letters that you find as you guys are making your way out of the spider's cavern. You see there is all of the chodes of the forest are assembled here, kind of uh, cheering you as you come out of the uh, out of the spider cave. It's a real chode party in here. Yes, yes. A real festival. They, uh, they say, I... Thank you for liberating us from the spider queen! <laughs> you are welcome. Now, in return, you must follow the old code. Uh... We don't know it, but sure. I'll send you some advanced copies. Oh, okay. Is that like a new edition? It's revised. <laughs> now, we must be off to the vault of Alaria and learn what she has in store for us there. All right. So as you guys, uh, as you guys make your way out of the forests to singing and dancing chodes around you, uh, you know, cheering your exit, you make your way back to Par- the town of Parabor across the lake, and you make your way to Alaria's mansion, uh, which I will tell you in just one second. Yeah. Um, Our mall town. Three teenagers, don't they? <laughs> Alright, there it is. More dogs right. coming back. Okay. So, uh, once you once you get back to the mansion, the field be- behind Alaria's house is peaceful and serene, and I will find some music that represents that. Uh, Elven Elven Day, I like Elven Day. Um, so the field is peaceful and serene. Her home is on a hill at the edge of Parabor, sort of overlooking the rest of the town from the front yard. Uh, the lake and the rest of the vale can be seen from the back of the house. And on cool summer nights, you guys would sometimes come uh, and and sort of sit on the house's back porch drinking uh, a beverage after a long day of training and watch the sun set over the forest. Uh, before you is the mysterious trap door at the center of the backyard. Uh, you've never seen the door opened. There are nine red square-shaped divots that are lined up in a single row along the door's center. And I will take you there. Hmm. And how many? These are all the letters that we have, right? Uh. Oh my God! There's a puzzle. Yeah. So um, uh. You uh you have the the tiles with you. And it says um, you can kind of feel them grow warmer as and this the the closer you get to the trap door, suddenly glowing blue letters appear at the top of the door, and they say. Uh, it's just above the red divots, and they say, Who is the master? Hmm. Oh, so we have nine letters in total, correct? Yes. And what are those letters again? Okay, we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we have NAD4 law, or our nine. And- uh, we have us have to scramble it and put in a right order. <laughs> no, we have to find a correct sequence, yeah, perhaps a word or a phrase. Okay. The master was Ilaria, of course, but we can't make Ilaria. Yeah. Those letters, can we? Is it a war fondler? A I war fondle? That's entirely possible. Uh, well, we war, have war encountered fondle. the chodes only recently. Yes. Bro. A fondle war. Fondle war. Uh, Dan... Law, Rothel. So you guys can actually move the blue things down at the bottom. Those oh. represent your tiles. My God. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and the red is the uh, where they're placed. Okay. Uh, oh, so it's like it's like Price is Right. <laughs> <laughs> see, and and Areola, Areola, that's in there. <laughs> where do they go? What? I go Areola. How do we know where they go? Do we just place them all in? Uh, yes, yeah, yes. Can you, that can one's you... right there. So, okay. Do we, do we win? Bob? The prize. Is there like a? There's a. Is there like a, an eight, eighties, nineties girl like showing all the yeah. prizes? So, 
as you uh, as you kind of place uh, place one tile into the. Um, by the way, I, the, ignore the letters for now. Those are not. We'll say those aren't actually on the tiles. If you place one of the tiles into the first slot, the the letter D begins glowing on it. Oh, isn't that always the as way? You, as you can see yes. on the on the image. We get in through the back door with the D. Well, if the D is the most uh, glowing letter for Alaria, then perhaps uh, what what follows D? E. Maybe E. Yeah. Isn't E? Del. Eh. Eloth. Like, I'm like very colorblind, so this is. Dean of. Yeah. I think oh, I might, I might Dean have... of Law! No. Dwar Dwarven? Yes. Dwar Dwarven Law. Yes, yes, Dwarf! Dwarven Law. Dwarven Law! Was this then... designed for people that were. We read colorblind. Just to... <laughs> I don't know. I didn't make this. <laughs> so, so as you guys as you guys start placing some some more tiles, uh, more of the letters begin glowing. Dawn. What about what about dawn? Yeah, dawn. Dawn of. Dawn of law. Dawn, dawn of war. Dawn of war. Dawn of, war. Dawn of, war. Dawn of yes. Good okay. game. Lord of dawn. Lord I mean, God. by the way, you, these the t if the tiles aren't showing anything, that means they're in the wrong place. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, look at that. This is cool. If, if there's a letter lighting up, that means they're in the right place. Okay. Well, uh, how, how about we take all the tiles off, then we just take one tile, put it in the first slot. No, we had some of them were in the right place. Then. Oh. Yeah, and then you moved them all. I, mean, I, moved can't, them all. I can't read. <laughs> Nobody no, reads anymore. We had Dawn. Oh. I can't see any letters. Oh, we fucked How can we not see any letters? <laughs> this, is, this is bullshit. Okay. Oh, I see now. Oh, okay, I, I was zoomed out. Like if it zoomed out a little bit, if it's it yeah, you like want to be you want to be zoomed in for like uh, oh, about halfway. Oh, the zooming. Yeah, 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 you gotta zoom. Uh, like, uh, you didn't tell me that, Dungeon oh Master. Holy God. Okay, Dawn. Oops, sorry. Ah, uh, damn it! We keep grabbing the same one. The guy is... <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Over oh, my character is so <laughs> <laughs> The other time I was like, no, we put that there. We've got the F, don't move the F. No, <laughs> no. No, I ah, found the G, found the G. Okay, the G's there. Oh, yeah, I, I edited, I typed, and accidentally typed a second A. I forgot to type the G. This is so oh, cool. How do, you, how do you do this? And... This is some badass shit. On of... Orgy. Dawn Forge. Dawn. Ah, uh, gotta swap these. Shameless product placement. <laughs> Shameless. <laughs> Dawn Forge. We, we did it. Uh, <laughs> and as uh, when when the uh, when the t the what does that mean, Laura? <laughs> when the tiles kind of click into oh, place, um, you uh, you kind of they all begin glowing, uh, and. You can kind of hear the door kind of as the stone starts grinding away, opening the entrance it's, into it's the secret the way below. to a woman's back door. Mm, a, a dawn Forge. Yes. The, the, the Forge of Dawns. Uh, I have no fucking clue what this means, actually. It's uh, well, I, but I, I, I can't remember how my character talks anymore. Fuck. Let's just go inside. I go inside. All right. As you make your way down the stairs, uh, into the you you're making your way down the stairs into the vault. Um, let me just delete these because I don't I don't need that guy. Uh, you guys eventually come down this spiral staircase, and as you're as you're coming down the staircase uh, into the vault, you see uh, this large structure looming before you and I will put you right here mm. not on the Dawn Forge thing on this thing uh, and as you as you descend the ch the stairs lead in this chamber lead down into a room with smooth white walls that glow with a magical light three mm. marble pedestals stand uh, on a, on top of a raised platform opposite the stairs uh, on the left pedestal, you can see a long sword with a silver hilt shaped to look like the wings of an angel. Uh, the middle pedestal holds a small metal chest, and the right pedestal holds a single perfect, 
pearl placed atop a leather-bound journal. Um, nice. On the walls behind the pestle, the pedestals are a framed map of the Merriam Vale, which is the uh, the Vale in the heart of Camelot, uh, with all sorts of strange markings. And one of those markings is a uh, Nutoringo. Yeah, welcome, Nutoringo, to the adventure. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Thank you for joining us. Uh, um, s- okay. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, sorry. Okay, so as you guys are kind of looking, stepping into this large vault, which I, I think I have a better, um, I have a better thing for, uh, as you as you step into the vault, we'll do magical stone circle. I like that. Uh, I like it a lot. Seems like she left something for each of us. Um, suddenly, there there is a kind of a a, a you see a sort of a, a faint flickering image of Alaria Feywing appearing at the center of the platform. So let me get a glow because that's her. Uh, if I could find it. When you say an image, I mean does she look like she's alive or like a statue of her? Um, no, it looks more like a like a flickering hologram. Ah. I'll, I'll do this. So that's that's where it is. Um, and she uh, she's kind of she kind of flickers to life. But as you uh, as you're kind of stepping, oh man, I have to find a token for this. Give me one second, because I totally forgot to, and I'm like I'm gonna need a good one. Did you forget the viewer decision? No, I didn't forget this decision. I forgot to okay. get a token. Um, <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Oh, oh. Let's see. Uh, I call out to Laria. Uh, hello? Laria, is that, is that you? Give me two seconds. Maybe I think this could do it? Yeah. I kind of like this. This will do it for now. Uh, so as you um, as, as you uh, you you kind of are walking into the chamber, you see all of a sudden stepping out from in between this space of nothingness, just like sort of stepping onto the floor in front of you, is a man. Uh, but he appears to be wearing a like a complete head to toe black leather suit. It's all these damn draw players. It's from the Matrix. No, no, I mean, head to toe. Are there zippers on it? There are. He uh, <laughs> he kind of reaches up and unzips the uh, the the mouth, and he says, "Hello, how can I help you today?" Do you know Luchodlings by any chance? I do not, but I do know why you are here. Yes, Laria sent for us. So she left a. Yeah. Trail of clues that we picked up along the way. Yes, oh, yes, yes. Alaria was my master as well as yours. I see that, yes. Were you the terrible student she spoke about? No, I was never a student of hers. She conjured me from the plane of BDSM. Hmm. Ah. She was into the 17th some, layer. She was into some freaky stuff. I, I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I am an immortal servant of hers, and she imbued me with all of her magical knowledge that I may pass it on to those who prove themselves worthy of her legacy. Well, we got ourselves a will that left all of this there. Uh, probably done hit her, so... um. Have we not proven ourselves already? You have. There are... You do not know this, but Alaria was training you to be more than just apprentices and adventurers. Was she going to turn us into you? No. She was yeah. going to train you to travel the planes, the dimensions, and to fight the evils that sprang up in other worlds. She was going to make you her crusaders. 
At the far end of the chamber, she has left tokens for you that you may take with you on these journeys. How about that one? Well, how do we travel through dimensions? I will get and to who says we even want to? I will get to that in just a second, but for now, <laughs> go, t go take up your tokens. I'd, I'd really rather know first before I touch anything. I <laughs> promise you, all of these have been thoroughly washed. Exactly. <laughs> Somehow I, I don't want to know what you washed them with, but very well. I, I say, uh, it looks like the sword might be for me, even though the pen is mightier than the sword. So, uh, so Slapnut, you kind of climb onto the dais uh, over to the, uh, the, litter, the little vault over there. Um, give me one second. That's right, I do. That's right, I do. I do that. I get on that dais and um, I open that chest. So you reach for base, you reach the for base. the chest. The yeah. Uh, as you open it, the chest is unlocked. It contains. It is almost entirely full of gold pieces, and sitting yes. on top of it are seven carven red gems. Said you didn't have a lot of gold left. Ooh, like, boy. I got the inheritance, folks. Uh, close it. Grab it. All right, cool. Uh, I'll meet you. Someone else. I'm thinking of the spell slinger for following. Welcome to the adventure, my friend. Your gentleman and a scholar. Um, yeah. The sword. Okay. So you, uh, Draco, you climb up onto the up the stairs and make your way over to the sword. The sword radiates with magical power. It is a plus one magic longsword. Hmm. Seems shit in comparison, Alaria. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can buy like ten of those. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'll give you one of these red gems for that fancy looking magic sword. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I, I lift and I, and I say, with this, I will, I will see that the old code is upheld. This is why you always go with the mystery prize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Price and, is uh, right. Dar awesome. Daryl, did you wanna? Did you wanna take the uh, the pearl and the book? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> I come back right. and I take them too. The the <laughs> pearl the pearl is a magic pearl of power, uh, which allows you to store a spell and cast it without using a spell slot. Not. And the book has uh, a selection of magic spells in it. I look over to um, this gentleman. So, what is this bard druid sorcerer magic, the BDSM that you are talking about? <laughs> Well, you know, you know that Elaria was a master of many disciplines. She was both a bard, a wizard, and a sorcerer master. Hmm. But How also, but also bondage and sadomasochism. On oh. the side, she had some spare time. Actually, <laughs> I always wondered why we couldn't get through her back door. Now I know. Yes, yeah, so back to well, the Well, I'm going to look through this book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> she's going to learn oh, so many yeah. things. Now you know what she's done. You want to look through that book. <laughs> All right. So as you uh, as you kind of are um, are, are collecting your treasure, the, uh, the gimp will kind of float over to you, and he'll say, and now you've, you've been must... hovering around the word Kimp and then you just went all in. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, the strange man in a suit. Well he it says on the it says Gimp on the on the, the viewer decision. I feel so. like he's some kind of imp. Yeah. He uh G G imp. He uh he kind of floats over to you and he says, There's one more thing you must do on this day. That, no. In order to travel between dimensions, in order to take full advantage of all the power the Master has granted you with, you must use these. They are dimensional transporting stones. <laughs> and he kind of pulls out from his from his pocket uh, pocket dimension. He pulls out. Um, what looks like a, a a jewel or something like a carven stone 
with two leather straps coming off on either side. <laughs> Here, can one be like several stones connected by a long string? No, that's that a different thing. Slightly bigger. No, this is this is these are specifically the dimensional travel stones. So, how, how do you use them? He uh, he kind of floats over and like puts it right up in your face and kind of latches it around your head. Right, it's a good. Where do I where do I teleport to? Uh, he says, "Say, or say, business and money." And where do I go? <laughs> you don't teleport anywhere. I seen so much today. <laughs> where do I go? Yeah, he says, "You must all equip the teleportation stones." <laughs> must we? Guys, I want fishes. Let's go. Are you there for I can fish this in? Oh, oh, please! Guy in alley. He's he's just kind of holding uh, one out, waiting for uh, waiting for Daryl to take it. Uh, no, you want to now. I've seen what you've been up to. Whatever do you mean? I should not you and a rat can of too. Um Is there another one for his rat? That yes. He will create a <laughs> tiny one for the rat. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> I'll have you not speak of turkey dumpling like that. Yeah, he says as as he kind of as you all you're kind of he kind of encourages you to equip the stone. He pulls his own out and kind of puts it in his mouth and kind of straps it on. He says, "Oh no, I will be a guy." That's the reason we will travel together and fight so evil. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like like Goldan in Warcraft, like conjuring this damn portal. This. And as you uh, as you all kind of equip the stones, he he like you all link hands, uh, and as the magic sort of swirls around you, God, just in hands. <laughs> as the magic swirls around you, you all are are whisked off across the dimensional barrier into. Uh, into the ether to find other worlds and other dimensions where you may fight evil, uh, carry on Alaria's legacy as a fighter a, of the old code, a bard of the f the flute, and uh, a dwarf, all accompanied by your magical gimp guide. So is so was is Don Guard like or Don whatever the password was? Is that like the safe word? Yes, that was that was Alorius. That, that was Alorius oh, oh, safe word. Yes. <laughs> don't forge, don't forge. Yeah. And if I could do stone wilderness for following, welcome my friendly adventure. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Richard is the happiest man alive right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. So I want to, at some point in our quest, uh, at some point in this journey, can I kill the gimp man? Uh, no, he's a magical immortal being. I uh, want to fuck up from the dip man at some point. <laughs> the uh, oh, I, the, the viewer decision. I'll try and attack him, and if I can't kill him, we'll just I'll try and leave him. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so as you guys, well, well, those I think are probably adventures for another day because uh, we uh, that that is all that it, we are going to get done today on the master's vault. We do have we are a little bit early, but. Uh, I don't know. Why don't we? But why don't we spend the last couple of minutes regale, like with everyone regaling us of tales of uh, of what your what your heroics are like across the. I don't know what happens to Turkey Dumpling. <laughs> That's all I care about. <laughs> Is he ever freed of his gag? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of. How is he gonna eat? What do you mean? Oh, like the you gag. Don't need to, you, know? you don't need to wear the ball gags forever. You just need to, <laughs> you need to use them to travel. So we what are so people we cross over episode. carrying around turkey dumpling in this this attire? What's up? We, we cross over episode into Outlands. <laughs> These guys yeah. are <laughs> <laughs> wearing ball gags. Hi guys. 
I can get, I can wheel you back home. God. Um, <laughs> I am so sorry, uh, creators of this game, for what we have done to it. Um, but overall, man, like for a quick like review of the the, the module, it was really good. Like for a free <laughs> module, you get in roll twenty for like, all the maps and the story. I, I, uh, I feel like I should mention none of the things that none of the things that I actually did, like none of the encounters or anything, actually are in this module. You're telling me the trollings aren't in the module? <laughs> what? I but, would but anyone buy this? I will. Uh, I will kind of while we're talking real quick. I will give you a quick scope, as you can see. Uh, some of the maps that are included in this module, uh, as you guys can see them load in, you've got beautiful forest maps right here. All the encounters are already set up. Um, there, I was actually reading off a PDF that comes with the module. There's uh, where it tells you, you know, the whole thing through. Uh, it talks you through all the encounters. And for those of you who are, you know, want to keep it in Roll20, you even have these handouts for DMs with all the flavor text to read, and the notes on each encounter, each puzzle, and each location. Uh, all of the creatures are already set up. You have the handouts right here um, that explain everything to you. You have the information on the traps. You have graphics like this one right here, uh, you know, which show you what, what traps and stuff look like. Uh, you have all the monsters already set up the stats. It's it's honestly a very very solid product. So I think everyone yeah, like, oh, I should go check this out if you are looking for an introduction to D and D adventure, an introduction to Roll Twenty adventure, uh, or just something to fill a couple hours and it's when you're free, not right? a normal campaign. It is absolutely yeah. free, uh, and it has been it is is really well put together. So it's beautiful. Right. I really like it. Yeah, it felt like Morrowind to begin with as well, and it also felt like Neverwinter Nights too. Yeah, um, it's the beginning is it Neverwinter Nights too? Yeah, I think in yeah. beginning, like as a student of like this person in a in like a mansion. <laughs> no, that's Baldur's Gate. Mm, no, I think it is Neverwinter Nights. I think it's an expansion of one of like the original Neverwinter Nights one. I just don't remember what it's called. Oh, but, yeah. you may be thinking um, of um, Mask of the Betrayer. Yes, I am. Yeah, Mask of the Betrayer. Yeah. Um, yeah, I felt like for a while like that, and then like Morrowind because of like hunt down the rats, and I'm like, ah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm in Balmora again. Hi, Fetcher. Yeah, yeah. Make it quick, Outlander. <laughs> um, what's the free resource again, and where can I find it? We drop a link to that in chat. For, yeah, yeah, I will uh, absolutely get that right, right now. That is uh, in the Let's market. Very fun of you guys. But yeah, you can go grab it and. Uh, I mean, uh, I've recently been using the Lost Mine of Fandelva uh, one as well, which is really good, but you have to pay $20 for that. So you can get this one for free on the marketplace, and that's a good alternative. I, uh, I just dropped the link in chat. That is a link to the Roll20 Marketplace where you can get the module. Like I said, completely free. And if you enjoy it, go hit up uh, James and Tricasso on Twitter uh, and tell him that you had a good time it, watching it being run and butchered or playing through it. Uh, <laughs> He will appreciate that. Yeah, he's uh, he tweeted us earlier. He's at James Intracast, so you can find that there. If you didn't enjoy today's show, you can, of course, hit that follow button and join us. Uh, usually I would have a 4 p.m. show, but it's mine and it's one year together, so we're going to go off and do one year things. We're, um, we're going to get pizza. Yes, we are. Um, <laughs> Uh, so no 4 p.m. show today, but um, I'm back on Saturday for the 24-hour stream, so don't miss that. Uh, I think that will make up for a couple of hours missed uh, today. Um, so uh, yes, uh, also we've got some wonderful projects uh, and things that these guys get up to. So let's hear about those. Um, so Rem, you do things on the internet, do you not? I do things, yes. Howdy, folks. It's me, Rim. I write things for myself. Can role play. I got modules up on the DMs Guild. Just tap in Insomniac Inc., and you should be able to find me. Uh, I'm going to be DMing one of those modules this upcoming Saturday for the 24-hour stream at what one in the morning? Is that? Yeah, I think it's a one end game. Yeah, yeah I, can sp I got I got the end game going, guys. I'm the caboose on the, that train, so <laughs> hop on. <laughs> Nice. Um, Maybe I won't be so drunk. <laughs> Perfect. Um, ask me to do things on the internet as well, don't you? Yes. Um, I'm just trying to adjust the volume of this music. Um, 
My name is Asker and I'm the host and the dungeon master of the Exploding Dice, tw Exploding Dice Twitch.tv channel. That's just twitch.tv slash Exploding Dice where we play live D&D every Sunday except this Sunday because uh, we're not going to be playing today. We're going to be hanging out on Unmade Gaming's 24, not, not 24, 12 hour stream where I am DMing the, uh, the, what's, what's the word? Um, I'm headlining the show as I, as I call it. Um, in the 7 to 10 p.m. slot there. Uh, so come hang out with us there. Also, I have a talk show every Tuesday called Fuzzy Dice, where I have live D&D uh, talk with great guests, Q&A, all that kind of stuff. This Tuesday, I'm hanging out with both Monty Cook and Shauna Germain talking about their new RPG. And also, tune in this Thursday, where we are going to be debuting an episode of the Experience Points show. The only place you can see it before it broadcast on Sunday is going to be on our channel this Thursday. So, come hang out. It's a great time. All right, and Tracy. I am a like the troll under the bridge, but I live on Twitch. So, I cast six days a week um, on my channel. Eight and a half hours a day. I do a lot of Mech Warrior, and I'm moving more into indie games. I'm going to be featuring uh, if you've ever purchased a humble bundle I'm gonna be featuring days where I uh, play all all the games that featured on the the re releases the day after the humble bundle comes out and in addition to that I'm playing a Fallout 4 character named Jules Fister she's a non cannibal that gets in all sorts of trouble no direction all sorts of trouble. All right, then. So, um, <laughs> yes. Okay. Go check out those guys. Go check out Exploding Dice, Trends TV, and run that. On the XGaming.com, the links for you guys are in the chat. Hey, Firefly. What's up, Touchpad? Uh, unfortunately, like I say, we're heading off now, finishing a little bit early. Uh, no 4 p.m. show because me and Sydney are off to do one year stuff together uh, and heading back to her hometown rather than being in college chicks. Um, she's up there. So um, <laughs> we'll be back on Saturday for the 24 hour stream. We'll see you guys then. Uh, thank you everyone for following and joining us today and for the entire week. Uh, for all those who donated, followed, uh, retweeted, came along, just hanged out. It was pretty awesome for you guys uh, to do that. And it was super awesome uh, for us to get to hang out with you guys for so long. So we're we'll back on Saturday, like I say, guys. And until next time, try to throw too many now ones because we're going to be here laughing when you do. Good night, guys. Bye. 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 Oh, thanks for coming back. Gentlemen, scholar. <laughs>